Please remain standing as United States veteran Michael White with Raceway Ministries offers our invocation. Our Heavenly Father, we honor you today. We thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us. We thank you for the freedom we have in you and the freedom, dear God, that we enjoy in America before all the veterans that have served and are continuing to serve to keep us free. Lord, I ask your hand of protection on this track, the racers, the, the drivers, the teams. Lord, I thank you for um, all the uh, first responders, dear God, that are, are here to, to be with us. Just your protection, God. We honor you as our Lord and our Savior, the name that is above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the gold standard and voice of the Chicago Blackhawks, Jim Cornelson. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare No wonder the Blackhawks games are so intense right from the beginning after that. We're ready to go racing on this Stars and Stripes weekend from Chicagoland.
beautiful day The sun beat down I had the radio on I was driving Trees flew by Me and Del were singing Little runaway I was flying Yeah, running down a dream That never would come to me Working on a mystery Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Chicagoland Speedway. Today's telecast presented by Steel. A very warm day. It will be here at Chicagoland in Joliet, Illinois for some of the stories that we're going to be following throughout the race. Let's go to Pit Road and Dave Burns. Rick, there's an old phrase in racing that all seat time is good, but yesterday's Xfinity 10th place finish for Chase Elliott took a lot out of him. That's because the cooling vest that he was wearing failed him. I just spoke to Chase. He said, I'm wearing the same one today, but we've got the issues fixed, and I took on some bags of IV fluid yesterday, and I feel great. And from his third starting position, Chase plans to win this race. Kelly. Chicagoland is one of just three tracks where Jimmy Johnson has never won a race, but if he's going to check that box today, it's going to be a tall task. The 48 team, one of those forced to start from the rear after failing inspection yesterday. Crew Chief Chad Canass told me they have not found the speed yet in this 48 car. Could be a long one, Marty. Martin Truex Jr. also has to start at the back of the field today, and he said, you know what? Not that big of a deal because we've won the last two races here, and three times in those races, we've had to come from the back of the field to the front. It's hot in Chicago. Let's make it a little hotter. Time to get the engines cranked and get the race underway. And now for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, Overton's Director of Operations, Pat Baker. Drivers, start your engines! All right, up here. Hey, Matt, what did they want to take down? The engines have come to life. Drivers strapped in. It's the first of two weekends celebrating the 4th of July.
NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Steel. Are you ready for a steal? Monster Energy, unleash the beast. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Every great city has its own personality. Whether you're talking about how people live, how they talk, what they eat, what they drink, and absolutely, definitely, 100% how much they care about their sports teams. I know as well as anyone, I played here, I coached here, and I even won here. Hungry Chicago, finally champions. Chicago fans like their teams to be tough, to be smart. Even the biggest stars like Michael, Walter, and today those kids on the Cubs and the Hawks. No! The reason they're beloved in Chicago isn't just because they won. It's because of the way they won. The Chicago Blackhawks win the Stanley Cup! The Cubs have done it! So that brings me to today, and a group of race car drivers who fit right in here. They know coming to this track means something. They know that if you win here, you get to become a small part of our history and all our pride. Win here, you get to say you're smarter and tougher. Win here, you prove how much you want it. Martin Truex Jr. wins at Chicago Land. Take it from this guy. He's gone to victory lane here for the last two years running on the way to the biggest title this sports got. How about this, Martin Truex Jr.? You are the champion, baby! Woo! Now they're all ready for the start. They can smell the broth steaming. They can hear the fans screaming. They can feel the grit. They can taste the opportunity. And you can be sure, Chicago's ready for them. Let's go racing, man. Drop the green. <laughs> man, I'm fired up. Wow. That was amazing. I'm glad you guys are in another booth. I'm sure somebody would have wanted to tackle me after that. We're ready to go. Let's take a look at today's starting grid brought to you by Steel up front. Paul Menard, it has been 10 years since he won the pole, but he won it last night. He will start in row one with Ryan Blaney. Check this out. We have four drivers in the top 10. They're looking for their first win. Chase Elliott, William Byron, Eric Jones, and Daniel Suarez. Daniel's job got tougher. He's got to go to the back. Coming up here, you got Kevin Harvick. He is uh, starting kind of toward the back. We saw the same thing yesterday. Start 13th. He was right up toward the front. There you see Joey Logano. I think he's going to have a great day. Fast all weekend with an average speed in practice. Kyle Busch, another guy toward the back. That's a little bit of a surprise where he qualified. It's fun to watch him work his way in this first stage. And Kyle Larson, he's going to be on the boards today, running the high side. It's going to be fun about, to watch him. Talk about some names in the back, some names you haven't seen yet, and they'll show up. Trust me. Martin Trex Jr., 36. Denny Hamlin, 37. Jimmy Johnson, 38. The excitement level will be through the roof watching those three work through the field early. Yeah, and Steve, surprisingly, the 78 has just left pit road because he's starting so far back. Let's talk to Martin Truex Jr., Jeff. Hey, Martin, it's Burton. You with us? Yeah, I got you, Jeff. Well, bud, we got some really challenging conditions today. It's exceptionally hot. How are you going to deal with this? Drink lots of water and try not to think about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think you got a lot to think about. You're having to start way in the back, and. That's going to be a challenge as well. How are you going to get yourself to the front? Uh, we got a little bit of experience with that here. You know, last two years uh, to get to victory lane here, we had to come from the back at least once in each race. So we got a little experience with it. Uh, it's not going to make it any easier, that's for sure. I think the conditions are definitely going to be more challenging, not only with the heat, but just the racetrack and the tire they brought. Uh, the cars are a little bit more on top of the track. So we've had good speed all weekend. and. Uh, We'll see if we can't get the balance dialed in today and work our way to the front. Well, Martin, on behalf of all the fans, thank you for taking some time, bud. Good luck. Yeah, thanks, guys. Welcome back. Have a good day. And we will ride along with a few different drivers today as we take a look at the in-car cameras. Well, we're riding along with Kyle Larson. has got the Credit One Bank camera. We'll see some great shots from that roof. Kevin Harvick, Jimmy John's camera also from the roof. Kurt Busch, another roof camber. Monster Energy, nice enough to let us ride along. Denny Hamlin, Coca-Cola cam, and look what he's got, Rick. <laughs> he's got this great <laughs> helmet cam that's going to give us some great views today. I love that vantage point right from the helmet. 
of Denny Hamlin. All right, Steve, break down this race for us. Well, it's going to be a grueling day. We've heard about the heat, but you got to look at how the race itself breaks down. 267 laps, a little over 400 miles, the first and second stage, both 80 laps. Final stage, a little over 100 laps, 107, and they can go just over 60 laps on fuel. All right, let's head back to Pitt Road and Dave Burns for stories before the green. Well, Rick, we've talked about the heat, and we also talked about the Cubs game, which was really hot on Saturday. On Friday, Kurt Busch took his guys out to see the Cubbies play, one of his favorite teams, and the team told me it was hot at 4 in the afternoon. So a big shout-out to the fans here in the stands here today. It is going to be hot watching this race, and I know they're going to hang in there, Kelly. Well, with two wins on the season, Clint Boyer has been mentioned in some championship talks, but he knows if he's going to become a regular part of the conversation, he's got to win on one of these mile-and-a-half tracks, something that he admits he struggled with a little bit in the past, but they feel really good about their 14 car today. Had good speed in practice, good speed in qualifying. He will start this one fifth. Marty? Well, Kelly, when you qualify well, you pick your pits kind of around cars you think may not be a factor later in the race. What happens when you fail qualifying or inspection after qualifying? Then you get your pit stall selected for you. Such was the case for Martin Truex Jr. and Denny Hamlin. And look at those five pit stalls. Later in the race, this will be a huge factor. Back to back to back, Ryan Blaney, Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, and Joey Logano will all pit together. Steve is a crew chief coming to pit road late in a race. This is your worst nightmare because you're going to be pitting around cars. You're likely going to be racing against not the way you want it to happen. Well, yeah, the stress goes up because, listen, that is going to be a decision maker in this race. Late pit stops, if you get blocked in, you're going to lose track position. But Dale, putting it on the side, putting it in the right position, that falls on the driver. But on a hot day, when they're wore out, that's got to be more difficult. Talk about it. Talk about the difference of what it's like behind the wheel during this over 90 degree day. We tell Truex, he don't even want to talk about it. These guys don't even want to think about it anymore. They just want to go race. And so when the race is going on, you really hate when the cautions come out and you have to come down pit road. That's a time to think about how hot you are. When you're actually driving the car in race conditions and battling guys, you're thinking about that. You know, it takes your mind off of the heat. So when the cautions come out, that's a miserable time for the drivers. It's tough to get down pit road and get off pit road. Your guys are hot and tired. So that's where we see most of the mistakes today. Yeah, Junior, you talked about the heat and how difficult it is. Well, here we go. Kurt Busch, let us put a thermometer in his car, 107 degrees. Hadn't dropped the green flag yet. It's only going to get worse. Temperatures will continue to rise. There it is. Already 108 now. It's been an incredible weekend already as we get ready to start off this 10 race run, run to the playoffs. Paul Menard, Ryan Blaney, row one. Coming to the green flag, the Overton's 400 underway. A little surprise right there for Ryan Blaney to be able to clear his teammate. Menard on the back straightaway thought Menard would be able to get her, get around Ryan there and get the lead, but now Menard's battling for second place with Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott trying to take that spot right away. Menard falling back just a bit. Down to the apron they go. Elliott takes second. Everyone chasing Ryan Blaney. That track position for Chase is critical, even that one position. I think that he can have an amazing day today if he can keep this type of track position. If he loses this track position early, it'll be hard for him to get back into the top five. And Paul Menard, not the start he wanted as we ride along with Kurt Busch. You hear it hitting the racetrack. This track is exceptionally rough. Drove down in turn three, bottomed out. Still two by two, fighting for positions. You see Kevin Harvick trying to move toward the front after a less than perfect qualifying run yesterday and that fight for track position that junior just talked about it happens right now all these positions matter it's so difficult to pass it looks to me like the bottom of three and four right now may be better see if kevin harvick can clear him the 20 car of eric jones he's able to clear him one and two i think you can maybe migrate to the top a little quicker than you can in three and four three wide for position eric jones on the high side mcmurray right in the middle William Byron in the 24, he chooses the apron that time by. We saw it yesterday in the Xfinity race, the bottom was the quickest for about 20 laps. We see 
Larson already up on the high side. It took him about 20 laps before he really started to work that outside the Xfinity race yesterday. Well, Larson isn't the only one at the top of the racetrack. We mentioned the 78 of Martin Truex Jr. started all the way back outside the top 35. It looks calm right here. Well, that's because he's already driven himself up to the 19th position. He has passed a bunch of cars already, 11 cars already, now working on the 47 of A.J. Allmendinger in front of him, doing a great job recovering. You see if Jamie McMurray can make the outside work. See that run he gets on corner exit. It's going to get to the outside of Eric Jones. Eric has nothing he can do. Kyle Larson's going to try to make that move with him. Marty. And Jeff, it might be simply stated, but Martin Truex Jr. told me before the race, he said, if we're going to get to the front, we need to be able to work on the bottom or the top. We've seen him do that both here in the first five laps, but he told me in this first stage, I expect to score points. So he expects to be in the top 10 before this first stage is over with. But Jeff, you've got to be able to work everywhere on the racetrack if you want to come from the back to the front. Well, that's exactly right, but that's one of the great things about this racetrack. You can use every groove. If you catch somebody, they're on the bottom, go to the top. The only difficult part about that, Junior, is your car's got to let you do it. If your car's not good enough on the top, it won't work. So a good handling car and a driver willing to go there, this is a great racetrack. A little bobble there out of the 78. Mark Trex Jr. as he continues to climb up the board. Well, you heard that the 78 wanted to score points. Well, it's also a battle within him and the other big three. But look right up ahead of him, five or six cars, the 18 of Kyle Busch. It has not been the smoothest weekend for the 18. Just been okay. Not showed the blinding speed he showed at other racetracks. I know there's still five cars between them, but Dale, if that 78 can catch the 18, that's going to be the first move on the chessboard. Look, I started in the back. I'm already here. Yeah, you wonder if... Uh True X and the big three, as we call it. You wonder if those guys really look at the other competitors the same as they look at themselves. And so Martin knows that the 18 and the four car are the guys he's going to have to probably contend for the win today. That's where it's, that's the way it's been all season. So if he can go ahead and get a position on the 18 early, that'll make his day a little, little bit easier going forward. He's getting there. He's catching him quick. You see the biggest movers. 78's on that list. He's already made up 12 spots, passing one of the harder guys to pass on a racetrack in Ryan Newman in the 31. He's able to get by, chasing after the three of Austin Dillon just in front of him. Denny Hamlin on that list. He's a guy moved going forward. He's had some great runs here, one here in the past. Look how Barton's able to just drive in the corner just harder. He just could drive in the corner harder than Austin Dillon in that three car and just go to the throttle sooner. And that's kind of an easy pass right now. As good as his car is handling, he... You know, Austin just couldn't put up any fight whatsoever. A little bit different schedule this weekend had technical inspection after qualifying. That's why we see some of these cars that we would have expected to be up toward the front starting in the back because they failed tech inspection. So that's why Martin Trex Jr. is fighting now to try to get through this traffic to get up front. We're going to take a look at Danny Hamlin. He's carrying the helmet cam for NBC today. We're going to take a ride with him down the back straightaway. It was pretty close right there off turn two. This track is real bumpy. We're going to go down to turn three, and he runs the bottom groove here. It's going to actually run the middle, but there's still a pretty good bump right across the tunnel. Boom, right there. You see it. Almost feels like it knocks his head off his shoulders. Coming off of turn four, these guys are racing. <laughs> this is a fun race. He's wanting to get a little bit of this when he gets up in there. But down the front straightaway, there's another bump going into turn one. You feel that right there. It's like driving off a set of stairs. It's not a dip. It's really a ledge. And uh, if you lift improperly or at the wrong time across that bump, you can lose the nose or lose the back of the car. Same thing in three and four. You go across that bump wrong. We saw it yesterday in qualifying. Fast cars having some trouble. We got a battle for second here. Chase Elliott making a move on Clint Boyer on the outside. Clint Boyer has been moving forward now in that 14, trying to get by the nine to take that spot away. Out front, Ryan Blaney. Clint Boyer hugging that white line right along the apron. Chase Elliott trying in the middle of the racetrack to keep the momentum up, and they yep. stay door to door. I love that outside line. I, I'm, I'm thinking Chase is going to get this position, even though Boyer's the one driving up there to get it. I think that outside line has got to be coming in here sooner or later. We're at lap 12. I talked to Clint Boyer this morning. He told me that he thinks the bottom is going to win this race. He was convinced that the top was going to go away, and he worked exceptionally hard to make his car work on the bottom. It's working for him right now. Ryan Blaney, the 24-year-old of High Point, North Carolina, leading at Chicago Lair.
very tight battle for the lead Ryan Blaney just in front of Clint Boyer. And it continues to heat up on the racetrack. Clint Boyer looking so strong as he's been able to power his way back up here to the front and fight now for the lead with Ryan Blaney. Yeah, Boyer ran Blaney down and had a great shot to pass him. They caught some lap traffic, and that stopped the pass. Now Blaney's changed his line. He says, you know what, i got to try something different. Boyer's digging on the bottom. Can he clear him getting into one? Here he goes. He's got the inside line. That's where he's been making up all his ground. Let's see if he can complete the pass. Boyer to the front of Chicago. That's impressive. He's done all this work on the bottom of the racetrack. We got guys back in the pack making great time, but they're all doing it on the fence. Nobody's making the speed on the bottom groove like Clint Boyer right now. So right now, Junior, I think what's difficult for Boyer is we know Kyle Larson's coming from behind. He's running exceptionally fast in sixth position against the wall. Does your spotter say, look, dude, I know you're leading the race, but you got to change your line because Larson's coming. How do you handle that? I would wait till Larson gets a little closer, at least where I can see him before I really started worrying about it, but I love that my car is working so well on the bottom. I, I think that's where you're going to race at the end. You know, the, where the last several laps, we get some cautions late in the race on short runs and, sh and new tires. The bottom is going to be the fastest. The fact that Clint's car is so good, he's got to be loving the way his car is driving right now. Marty. And you see Kyle Larson working that bottom, guys. Yesterday in the Xfinity Series race, he started last, came to the front to get the win. He used the top mostly, and he told me, I feel pretty good about my chances to go back to back here at Chicagoland. But you see what he told me? The bottom is going to be the key today. So, Junior, you mentioned a moment ago, you think to win this race, you've got to be on the bottom. We said Clint Boyer thinks you've got to be on the bottom. The man who loves to highline the most, Kyle Larson, agrees the bottom, best way at Chicagoland today. Yeah, the bottom is going to work great at the start, and then you know, the guys are going to be, you know, the guys are going to be fast up high later in the run. Nobody's going to be on new tires and run the fence and win the race. I mean, you, you, you just, that's not going to be the fastest way around. It's going to be on the bottom and got a big three battle here. Well, we talked about the 78. He started shotgun on the field. He's already overtaken Kyle Busch in the 18. Proved a point to him. Now he's run the four of Kevin Harvick down. For what position? 10th. He said he wanted to score points in the first stage. Well, Rick, he's already working himself into the top 10 as he gets underneath Kevin Harvick. And he has put down some impressive lap times. It's been between the 78 of Martin Shrex Jr. and the 42 of Kyle Larson. Those two have been fighting for who turns the fastest laps and running two different lines around this racetrack. And this is something we see from Kevin Harvick, right? When he starts yeah. in the back, he charges to the front. Well, now somebody took it to him. Martin Truex started in the back, and he just passed him for that 10th position. So Harvick right now, he knows he's got to make his car a lot better. Not a little bit better, a lot better. It's some awesome racing right here, man. We got four cars battling for position. I did not see the speed in Truex's car during practice. Cole Pern said, don't worry about it. He ain't worried about speed. He's worried about feel. Looks like that plan is working out really good right now. Truex seems real comfortable. Marty. And Junior, you talk about that quiet confidence the 78 team has. Even when they had the penalty and they left the racetrack at 9.51 last night after they finally got through inspection, there was no panic on this race team. Colburn told me, listen, we came from the back in this race to win last year as we're watching a battle for a second twice to be able to win that race. After a penalty, then we had loose lug nuts. So us starting in the back was no big deal, and they're proving it on the racetrack right now. And this battle for second, Rick, really heating up here. Blaney trying to keep it. Yeah, Kurt Busch on the inside tries to take that spot away. Way, a little bobble there at Ryan Blaney up against the fence. And that will be Kurt Busch's position now as we see Eric Almirola now taking a shot at that 12 and trying to take his position away as well. And what a good job by Eric Almirola. We've talked about it all year long. First year in that car has driven it toward the front, having a really good year, but he wants to have a great year. He doesn't want to be the guy at Stuart Haas that hasn't won. These two guys, Kurt, Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch, and Eric Alvarado, they're the two that haven't won there. They want to try to find a way to get, get in victory lane, Dave. Hey, Jeff, remember the beginning of the year for Kurt Busch started with a new crew chief in Billy Scott. But Billy told me this morning, we knew what Kurt wanted before the season started. A, a Vegas winter test told us everything we needed to know about what this driver wanted for speed. He said now it's just been a matter of getting it week to week and executing. He still doesn't have that playoff uh, making win yet, but they're getting closer for their driver 41, Kelly. Well, his teammate, Al Eric Almirola, not just a new crew chief, a whole new team for him. 
they've certainly exceeded some people's expectations. When I talked to his crew chief, Johnny Kostmeyer, today, he said, look, the biggest area that we need to improve is on our qualifying and on restarts. Well, qualifying today, they started this one six. They feel like they've got a good long-run speed car. They said it's also going to have to be versatile. They feel like there were times that this track will command for the drivers to move up top to find the most speed comers and goers in this race right now Martin Truex Jr. about ready to take over the spot from Chase Elliott remember Chase Elliott was up there fighting for the lead early Martin Truex Jr. started in the back they're meeting right now at about the seventh position and there it is the pass has been made Martin Truex Jr. now by the nine of Chase Elliott he continues to move up he's seventh now NASCAR drive that's your race companion you can watch and ride along with in-car video of your favorite drivers. You can even watch multiple angles all at once. Never miss a lap with NASCAR Drive. All you have to do is visit nascar.com slash drive. You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Chicagoland Speedway. Clint Boyer out front. Coming up this Friday on Today, one of country music's biggest acts, Lady Annabellum, live on the plaza. That's only on Today. A couple laps ago, Landon Castle had some issues on the track, had to come to pit road, but no issues for the 14 of Clint Boyer. He's running strong, Kelly. Yeah, and he continues to run the bottom of the racetrack. He told me that he thinks he can run better there this year than he has been able to the last three, four years. And his crew chief, Mike Bugaravich, told me, hey, we better be running the bottom because we never moved off of it during practice. So if we have to, we really don't know what to expect. Clint hasn't said anything about his car. At right now, they just asked him just now, are you happy in there? And he said, yep. His only issue is that his digital dash has gotten a bit messed up. So he doesn't have any of his lap times. They're reading, out to, reading them out to him uh, lap by lap. This success may be because of Thomas Selby. He wrote a letter to Clint Boyer and actually sent him his gold medal that he won in the tournament that qualified for the Winter World Games for the Special Olympics. Clint was so impressed. He tweeted about it and he said, this inspires me. This is what I like. And right now, Clint Boyer out winning this race. There's that tweet. 
I didn't say the end there. Let's all kick uh, some <laughs> butt this week. But that's exactly what he's doing to this field, and he's crediting Thomas Selby. That's great where you can get inspiration. 78 on pit road. Green flag pit stops underway. 78 on pit road now. Mark. Here he comes down pit road, Rick, and this is the teams really kind of splitting this first stage in half. It's an 80 lap stage, so you have seven sets available to you, Steve, and tires do mean something as they push Landon Castle's car off of pit road. Truex comes to a stop in his stall. Clearly no changes, very happy with the handling of the 78 car. Just a little bit free. They are going to make a very slight air pressure adjustment, but no chassis changes for fresh Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. So, Steve, I think this is going to bring more cars down pit road because tires mean a ton here at Chicago Land. Absolutely, Marty, and I like the 78 pitting early, not just for the strategy on track, but you mentioned about the issue on pit road stacked in there next to the 12, the 42, the 11. The advantage of pitting early is he knew he had a clean in and out for his pit stop. Kelly? Now you see the crew of Eric Jones in that 20 car going to work. Eric saying that he was just tight in the center of the turn and loose a little bit off. We'll see how those four fresh Goodyears help him out. Eric Jones coming out of his pit stall again. Green flag pit stop cycling through now, bringing down. We see the 42 of Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney also down there. Almarola has moved up to second now. Boyer still out on the track. Marty. Kyle Larson is going to come to his stop in his stall right in front of him. Ryan Blaney with just one stall between the two of them. Larson said he was a little bit too free, but didn't want to make a big swing at it. It's going to be four fresh good new tires, a slight air pressure adjustment. How calm are these drivers? As Ryan Blaney was racing for the lead, he was giving a report to his team on how the car was handling. He said it was too free for him. They put a piece of tape on the grill and also made an air pressure adjustment. And Paul Menard with the very first pit stall on pit road said he was working the track bar hard inside the car. He was free in the middle of that run, but got too tight on exit at the end of the run. Kurt Busch, part of the three-car Stuart Haas Racing Triumvirate at the front of the pack. He came down pit road for a car that was just a little bit tight, needed Sunoco fuel, needed fresh Goodyear tires, and now Kurt is back out. Kelly, Marty? Joey Logano on pit road, made some decent progress. He said his car got too free at the end of that run, though. They didn't make a wedge adjustment. He, too, said he was working the track bar and had to make some drastic changes on the track bar throughout that run. Kelly. There's the 14 of Clint Boyer who made quick work getting to the front of this field that he was excited about his race car over the radio. As I said, the only issue that digital dash, which they could not reset while he was out on track. They were going to try to reset it while he was here on pit road. It's been a nice day for William Byron. I should say a nice weekend for William Byron. Made the third round in qualifying. That was a big goal for the race team. And as he told us in the pre-race show, feels like the team has made some big improvements. The car too free for William the further he runs. So they're going to make a wedge adjustment. Also an air pressure adjustment trying to tighten up that 24 car. One thing these teams don't want to do on pit road is have any kind of violations and the 19 team of Daniel Suarez had a man over the wall too soon on oh, the 14 car 14 speeding Ah, the leader Clint Boyer. So he'll have to do a pass through penalty as the 19 of Daniel Suarez is suffering that penalty right now doing the pass through. Brad Keselowski scored as the race leader up front Kyle Busch running second Hamlin has now moved up to the second spot moving Kyle Busch back to third. Kyle Busch in his pit stall. And he patiently worked his way up from his 16th place starting position to crack inside the top five. His crew chief Adam Stevens telling me that patience would be the key word today because they couldn't burn off their tires trying to work their way to the front too quickly. He's got four fresh Goodyear Sunoco fuel and he's on his way. A little over a handful of cars that still have not come to pit road yet. One of those being Brad Kozlowski, who's out front, Denny Hamlin, Austin Dillon, Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Newman, David Reagan, Michael McDowell, Chris Busher, and Ty Dillon still to have their services completed. And as this continues to cycle through, how long will Brad Kozlowski stay out on the racetrack? Marty. 
And Rick, that's a great question. And Steve, we have seen this time and time again from Paul Wolf and Brad Kozlowski. Also the guy running in second, Denny Hamlin and his crew chief, Mike Wheeler. Sometimes when teams come to pit road, they'll say, you know what? Too many people on pit road. Let's wait a little while. They're trying to stretch this out a little bit further. Paul was going to come pit road, he told me, before the race at like lap 35. They were the first team on the wall to come to pit road, but they decided to stretch it out here and see what happens, Kelly. The 48 of Jimmy Johnson has made his way to pit road. Jimmy saying that he was just tight off the turns. He was tight getting onto the throttle, but he said running up top was okay for good years. Great shot right here. In-car camera coming down pit road with Denny Hamlin. He's looking for his sign, trying to find it. The spotter's telling him two away, three away. That's his key to start looking. Try to hit your left front headlight on an 11. Now, car goes in neutral. Keep the car running, don't let it stall. Car is up on the right side. You feel it's up. The minute you feel it drop, there it goes. Put it in gear. That way, the left rear tire's not turning when well, the guys are trying to put lug nuts on it. Now, you're waiting for the jack to fall. As soon as it falls, go, go, go. Spin the tires. Make sure you're clear. Do not speed. Pit stop looks easy, but actually doing it's very difficult. <laughs> that only took 12 seconds, Jeff. Things happen very quickly on pit road. We have seen before where Denny Hamlin, maybe a little rambunctious on pit road, has a few more speeding penalties than most. They've been working on that. Yesterday they talked about the throttle being a little harder, the spring in the throttle a little harder for him to push. Maybe that was the issue that they had. They've been working on that. And Rick, the 14 car did what you cannot do. He got busted for speeding the first time. That's okay. He came down the second time and got busted again. On his so pass clearly through. they have some kind of a problem, Marty. And Paul Wolf reminded Brad Kozlowski that whatever you do, do not speed. When he came in, they had a big piece of debris on the grill. They're going to clear that. He said it was temps would just gotten a two over, meaning two over optimum temperature. He said the car just too free. It's going to be an air pressure adjustment, trying to tighten them up, get that, that grill clean, get that debris off, and get the temperatures to come down as well. Continuing to cycle through, green flag pit stops. Austin Dillon up front. Let's listen into the 14 radio. Do a stop and go now. Sandy spin again. Now we have to do a stop and go. We're going to have to knock some RPMs off here or do something completely different. Something's obviously not aligned. So, so pit road is broken down into speeding zones, Steve. It's broken down in sections. Both times he's gotten busted in the shortest section on pit road, the very last section going onto the racetrack is only 42 feet long, Steve, and that's where he's gotten busted twice. Pre preparation, Jeff, this is the most speeding of any racetrack in the series. Kelly. Well, Steve, the word from the team at first was that that digital dash issue should have had no effect on, um, on his speeding on pit road, but now just a second ago, it sounded like they said they were having some issues with the RPM. So there is some issue that they need to get worked out with this 14 car. So that makes a little more sense. Remember early Kelly said that he did not have his lap time. That comes through that system as well. Sounds like there must be an issue with his dash. I mean, I can't imagine back to back speeding penalties, Jeff. So listen, the reason he was back on pit road again, Steve, was because the second penalty is a stop and go. He didn't stop. He just did it like it was a pass through. So then he had to come back in again and do a stop and go. He is Bad already, worse. yeah, two laps. Now three laps, he's gonna be down. Clint Boyer, after leading the race at Chicagoland Speedway, fighting just to stay three laps down. We go NASCAR nonstop.
You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Chicagoland Speedway. This telecast presented by Steel. Rick, it has been an exciting stage one. We saw Clint Boyer go up and take the lead. Well, guess what? If you're a fantasy player like I am, like Dale is, NASCAR Fantasy Live, it's a great place to come. You can even join a league now. NBC, we had a 10-week league. Somehow Rick won it, Dale. I'm not sure yeah. how that happened, but it reset this week. You go to NASCAR.com slash NBC Sports Fantasy to join up. You can compete against me, Dale Jr., Rick, and Dale, I hope that my kid is watching. He's managing my thing. He better put Boyer in the better garage after that start. Kelly. Well, you'd sure be happy if you had Eric Almirola in this 10 team on your fantasy roster as he looks to inherit the lead once the cars ahead of him come to pit road. Remember, his first year with Stuart Haas Racing, his crew chief, Johnny Klossmeyer, said he's, he's really seizing the moment. Their game plan for these next 10 races ahead of the playoffs, he said it's all about points, points, points for us. We want to make sure we maintain a good points cushion to get in. But hey, how about if they could get a win here in Chicagoland and put the points situation out of their minds? That would be huge. Right now, it's Austin Dillon and Ryan Newman that still have not come to pit road yet. So it's they have completed 56 laps, and they haven't been on pit road. So why are they not pitting, Steve? I mean, this seems like, uh, you know, the whole field's just putting so much time on them. When they come to pit road, they're probably going to be a lap down. They are, but you got to remember, they should hopefully be able to get their lap back at the end of the stage if they put themselves in position. But here's the problem. They were a lap down before. The, the cycle started. So their only way to really save themselves, they were 19th and 20th, a lap down at the start of the pit cycle. Stay out. All of this time they've stayed on the racetrack. They're on the lead lap, they have track position. A caution would have saved them. I don't mind the strategy, because remember, they're going to pit. We know 20 laps later the caution's going to come out. They can either do the wave around or perhaps be in the free pass position. We've seen this. you got to do something different. We say be aggressive, this is aggressive. Yeah, and Steve, you can't, you can't. The beauty in this call is they don't have winning race cars, right? So they can't call the race like you can if you're, you know, Eric Amarola or Kurt Busch. You've got to do something completely different, correct? Well, I found it interesting. It's two RCR cars. Like, this is a conversation they must have already had or the way they're breaking down the information. There is a reason that they're doing this. They have some sort of information that feels this is their best strategy. As we're on board with Kyle Larson. Junior, you talk about running the top. You said this guy does it as good or better than anybody. Yeah, Kyle Larson's back up top running from that high line, he's above this seam going in the corner. And the higher you enter the corner, the sooner you can start to feed that throttle. And then the real advantage of running the top is the speed down the straightaway. The guy on the bottom is trying to get back to the throttle, and he can't because he doesn't have the forward bite. The guy on the bottom has a little more side bite, a little more side force, a little more drive off, and will, will carry a little more speed off the corner and down the next straightaway and just kind of keep doing that over and over and over and over. You see him gain off a turn, off a turn two and down the back straightaway, he gains on him all the way. You just keep doing that over and over. It's all rhythm. Kyle Larson, the best. I'm, I'm not even going to say one of the best. He's the best at running the top. And right now, Kyle Larson running in the fifth position. But again, there's Austin Dillon. He has decided that it's time for him to come to pit road. That means that Almarola, because Newman also coming to pit road, Almarola will be the new leader. Teammates hitting the road. This is the three of Austin Dillon. He said that his car is loose in turns one and two, but it's a little bit better in turns three and four. They're going to give him four good your tires, make an air pressure adjustment. So we got some two-car radio that sort of helps explain the spotter, given Brad Keselowski the information about where Kyle Larson's running and how to improve his, his high groove. Let's take a listen to that. You come off the wall on the entry into one, a little more than Larson does. That's really the only difference. I'll be good if he'll keep talking to me about entry to one. Four, his left sides are on that top seam, and he never comes off of it. He goes in and just rides it right around the corner. His radius of inch never changes off the racetrack. And so he's telling Brad that Brad's running the top at this particular time when we had that radio transmission. He's telling Brad Larson's getting in just a little closer to the fence. Larson stays on the fence, really, down the straightaway and into the corner. And there's a little bit more to be gained there if you can do that and commit. The only thing is, is it's early in the race. Do you really need to commit that much? Well, that's the point. You know, that entry, you've always said that entering that high is the most difficult thing because there's no room for error. Any sort of slip, any sort of slide, and you're into the wall. Great battle for second. Kyle Larson had used the high line to try to get by Kurt Busch. Then he goes to the bottom of the racetrack to actually make the pass. 
Almirola out front. He's got a two and a half second lead over Kyle Larson and Kurt Busch. Folks, nothing like attending a NASCAR race. And this season, they have been treated to amazing performances. And more dramatic moments are sure to come. All you have to do, visit NASCAR.com slash tickets to purchase tickets and make new NASCAR memories in an upcoming race near you. Rick, you talk dramatic moments. My new booth mate here, during that green flag cycle, it was all dramatic. He didn't know if he should be watching pit in, pit out. So what do you think? The view from the booth. Crazy, isn't it? So far, that's been the toughest part of the job is going through that pit cycle because I've, I've lived it for inside the car. I, I come down pit road and I come back out. I don't know why guys are further ahead or further behind. <laughs> I just go with it. But that right there was uh, impressive. To watch you guys sort of dissect everything that everybody was doing, there's so many different strategies. Um, I got a lot to learn. Well, that's the beauty. This view up here, we're spoiled. It, it's like sitting in the stands. You can see the whole place, and there is racing all the way around this one-and-a-half-mile track. Some great racing right here. We see Truex all the way up in third, started towards the back. Great recovery, first on pit road. Now he's kind of settled in, right, with only 11 laps to go on the stage. Now it's talk to Cole Pern, keep adjusting on your race car. Yeah, he knows he's not got quite as good of tires as these guys because he came in so early. So he can be calm. No, he's got a great race car. He's got the track position he needed. Impressive to see Al Marola doing so good. And the other thing, too, here we go. We've got an in-car in, in -car shot. What is that, 157? One, 150 whatever. 153, man. I told you the booth is a good place to be. Yeah. So look right here. Yeah. He's driving 153. He's in the corner right here, so it's very busy. But on the straightaway, it looks like he's moving his hands around either trying to get up. There you go, out the window. Oh now, can God. you feel that as a driver? You know, that, that you don't, you don't do that. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're racing at a normal racetrack under normal conditions, you don't think about doing that. That tells you right there how miserable he is. He is so miserable that even though he's trying to focus on the car, run the line he needs to run. He's going to stick his hand out the window to get some cool air. And, and he's not really getting a ton, but he's trying to get anything he can get. Well, he needs to, hey, put it in perspective. That's 155 degrees. Medium, medium rare steak. You take that off the grill at 155. Also so, I mean, it is cooking in that car. On the right side, he got a little vent down here. You see that? That's coming from the passenger side window blowing in there. And he's he's not feeling that either. I mean, these guys are, are suffering through this. I'm glad I'm not out there. 
This is one. This is probably the worst I've ever seen it. I've never seen temperatures. In, I mean, we've had temperature um, thermometers and everything inside the cars for years, and never seen temperatures this high. Well, and we talked the fans why they've come out, and we appreciate it. They're in shorts, t-shirts, having a cold beverage. But these race car drivers, look what we have to do. Ryan Trucks was nice enough so we could get a little sneak peek. Dale, explain all of these items he's putting on. All right, he's got some Nomex underwear. He's going to keep put on there in his suit. He's got a head sock and his helmet, and his gloves. I mean, that's. That's a lot to be wearing in this kind of temperatures. I mean, the interior, interior of the you car. You wear that to the beach? <laughs> yeah. <you're not> gonna <laughs> and remember, guys, yesterday during the Xfinity race, which is 100 miles shorter, there were guys losing over eight pounds during the race. We got guys in this race today that ran that race, so they had to somehow put all that, all those fluids back in their bodies overnight. And if they were smart, they would have went to the infield care center and got an IV and did that. The, the, that's the best way to do it. Dave. So Kurt Busch not running bad right now. In fact, fairly relaxed. You you notice that just sticking the hand out the window. But when he was passed by Larson, he just informed the crew very calmly. Ah, the back is not sticking. We we kind of lost grip overall, but it's all good. So you talk about those double duty drivers. Let's talk about Chase Elliott in the nine. He didn't have the best car yesterday. He worked extremely hard behind the wheel. We saw him get out after the Xfinity race just how gassed he was. You mentioned it this morning in the meeting. He has to go and go get those fluids. But the question is, will he know during this race if he's ready to run 400 miles? I mean, you don't. You just go out there and try to do it. Um, you can see right here climbing the enemy. He's, he was smart to go get those IVs and those fluids. I think that, you know, when you go through something that these guys went through yesterday, you might as well go get checked out in the medical center and get whatever they need. Get in there and get you feeling good. I talked to Elliot. This morning, he said he feels like a new man. So we'll see if that see if that rings through at the end of this race. Dave. And the suit that he was wearing yesterday did not function. The vest, I should say. It's called a chippy vest. Did not function the way that it was supposed to. And Chase told me this morning that he believes it's fixed for today. The problem with that suit, and it's not the kind that we showed you on our air this week that Jimmy wears, that Jimmy Johnson wears. It's a little different. The problem is when the chippy vest is not blowing air through it, it does heat up. And he says that definitely contributed to the problems I had yesterday. So far, so good for Chase as far as heat goes today. I used that vest a little bit last year. Uh, Jimmy Johnson introduced it to me. It's got a little gel chemical that runs through it. It's amazing when it works. The only thing is, is all these teams really, they use all the amperage in the cars. And this vest doesn't use that much. I mean, it's only a couple, seven amps or so, but they use so many amps to get these cars to handle well with the fans and so forth that sometimes when you overload these cars during the race, something's going to start cutting out. Right. And typically they wire the system, believe it or not, for, so that the interior driver comfort stuff fails first. Believe, believe that, that or not. Oh, I, listen, right? I made that decision. <laughs> You had mentioned the drivers that had run in the Xfinity Series. Three of the drivers that ran yesterday are in the top nine right now, including Kyle Larson, who won the race, currently running second. Let's listen into the 48 radio. Get up to it. You tell him to block. If he starts to go down the bottom, you tell Jimmy to go down the bottom. Just park it. You got it. There you have it. Race leader Eric Almarola coming up behind the 48, and you just heard it. Block him. Well, it didn't work because Almarola is going to go by. Trying to put that 48 a lap down. He's going to fight for it. I mean, you got to. Not much of a fight there off at the corner, but Jimmy's car is just not driving well enough for him to really put up much of a fight. I mean, it's obvious he's getting lapped here by Eric. And Eric, I mean, the SHR, they've been fast. I mean, teammate was flying earlier. We're going to see off of turn two, man. Jimmy just wheeling it. And that's the thing, man. And when you got a car that's not driving that well, that's when you get time to think about how miserable you are inside that car. And amazingly, a little over a year ago, Eric Almarola suffered a compression fracture in a crash at Kansas. Now he comes out of turn four. He's going to win his first ever stage in the Monster Energy Cup Series. Almarola wins stage one. Martin Truex Jr. fighting back from starting at the back. He finishes third. Harvick top five. Keselowski sixth. Ryan Blaney gaining some valuable stage points. Logano, Elliott, and Eric Jones. But it's Alvarola. Once again, Stuart Haas flexing their muscles here in the Monster Energy Cup Series.
Eric Almirola just won the first stage of the Overton's 400 from here at Chicagoland Speedway. Coming up on Wednesday and every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern, NBC Sports on Sirius XM joining the morning drive. That's NASCAR Radio Channel 90. And this week, Steve Letarte, you get to jump on board with the boys. Oh, I can't wait. I love calling in Pete Pistone, my man Mike Bagley, talk about some racing. That show's so much fun, really in touch with the fans. And you see the crews up on the wall getting ready for their teams to come on to pit road. And here they come, Dave. Kurt Busch back to fourth, informing his crew that his car has gone a little bit to the free side. Kyle Anderson will hand us some fresh water. That is typical. He'll get four fresh Goodyear tires and air pressure adjustment in them. And Sunoco Fuel, Kelly. Eric Almoral capturing his first stage win. He said it's turning better. He said, really, I'm pretty happy with it. It's basically doing everything that I want it to, so not much work to be done here. Just four fresh Goodyear tires and Sunoco Fuel, Marty. Here's what happens when your pit stall is assigned. Second and third, pitting front to back. Martin Truex Jr. in third said his car was better the longer they ran. They were top three lap times on all tires. Kyle Larson right behind him said he wants water and a nice bag and a long stop for the 42. Trouble with the left rear, and there's a problem right behind. Denny Hamlin could get out of his stall exactly what we talked about all these assigned stalls trouble here on pit road for the 11 car yeah that race off pit road this is brought to you by Kroger click list and Eric Almirola is going to hold serve how about Eric Jones gaining five spots but Martin Trex Jr. losing six positions on that pit cycle see if we can dial up Eric Almirola and talk to him the winner of stage one hey Eric, Jeff Burton in the booth you with us yes sir I got you Man, that was your first stage win. Tell us where your car is so strong. Everywhere. Uh, <laughs> Johnny and all the guys on the Smithfield team did a great job making some changes uh, for the race today. And our Ford Fusion's really fast. So it just feels good. The track's really slick and old and worn out. And my car is making good grip. So uh, able to uh, drive around here pretty good. Pretty comfortable. That's what it takes. Well, it sure looks good so far. Hope it keeps up for you, buddy. Good luck. Thanks. Got a lot of way to go, but really happy with it so far. So proud of everybody at Super Haas Racing. It's worked out well. The strength continuing to show for the 10 team and everybody else with Stuart Haas.
Hashtag hey rut. I got a great tweet that said, hey, you got to come over and find me. This is where we are. We got a great slip inside. So I came over and found him. And guys, I gotta be honest, I, I've looked into it. I, it's not enough water for me to get down, but I got some great GoPro footage of three girls going down. But as you can see, it's a pretty solid, it's a pretty solid surface there, pumping water from a pickup truck to get up the hill and go down. Uh, but Rick, I can tell you, the stream was a bit weak for me. I couldn't get down there. <laughs> it was a little bit dangerous as the field now approaches the Geico restart zone. Almarola, Harvick, one and two. Fighting for position back there. Fourth, fifth, sixth. Kyle. Four wide now for fifth. You got to know it's Kyle Busch. He's going to take that outside. That's his M.O., man. If he's on the outside line and he can make it three wide or four wide, he's going to try to do it. How about come. that run by the four car through one and two? He did not get a good start, but he flew through one and two. Kurt Busch Harvick. Kurt Busch had a little trouble through the bumps there and got tight underneath Brad Keselowski. We got a great battle for the lead. Harvick's trying to take it away from Alvarola. Harvick on the inside. Can he complete the pass? Almirola strong on the outside as they go to one. If Harvick can stay right there, I think you'll have the advantage in three and four. I think the bottom is better over there. Good Al job by Almirola. Yes, Pulling strong. off Harvick. And remember, they're teammates. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got, the win you got the lead. Somebody's trying to take it from you. You don't care who it is. Almirola, Harvick, Kozlowski, Kurt Busch, Chase Elliott at the top five. We've been waiting on this performance from Almirola all year long. I mean, he's been sitting there being consistent, but not running in the top three, not getting the same type of dominance that we've seen out of his other teammates. Junior, remember, he was a half a lap away from winning the Daytona 500. Absolutely, but since then, he's sort of been just right inside that top ten. This is, this is what we want to see from Eric, and this is what Eric wants to see. So. It's a career day for him. Well, he's driving away from arguably the best driver this year. you got Martin Truex Jr., you got Kyle Busch, and certainly Kevin Harvick. So right now, he's driving away. Junior, that feels so good, doesn't it? It does. It does feel good, but it's early. you got to hope that, you know, your car still has that dominance late in the race. This track's going to change a little bit. He's got to keep up with it. He knows his teammate Harvick knows guys. Rodney on the box, they're smart. They know exactly what they need to do the rest of this race. His team has yet to be able to prove that. Junior, you just mentioned that Almirola is having a career day. He has already led more laps today than the last three seasons combined. So that's how good Almirola is running here at Chicagoland. Marty. Hey, Rick, what's missing from this picture of the top five? That's Kyle Larson, who was running second when he came to pit road. When he came to a stop in his pit stall, Denny Hamlin was behind him. Again, Denny Hamlin and his team didn't pass inspection. They were assigned that stall. Hamlin could not get out because Kyle Larson was sitting there because his car completely died electrically. You can see the dash goes black for Kyle Larson once he's in the stall. So he didn't know what to do. He has since gone out. You see him there turning on the master electrical switch, trying to refire the car. They were able to get him back back out. He was able to cycle the ECU. He is back up to full full power now on the racetrack, but lost a ton of spots here on pit road. Junior, I can't imagine what it's like coming to pit road and all of a sudden everything in front of you goes completely black. What's that like as a driver? Well, these cars have changed so much over the years. The protocol on what to do when that happens is often unknown by the driver. So the driver has to get the information from the, he has to relay really what happened first and then try to get some information from the crew chief and hopefully the crew chief knows what to do well i was going to tell you and then and once you tell me i look at the motor <laughs> guy and i find him and i say okay i know i'm supposed to remember all these codes and situations but come help me because there are so many different functions within yeah. that dash you definitely need well, an you expert. just switch to the second ignition that's that's not there no longer no it's going to be fun i mean kyle larson doesn't like this but you know it's going to be fun for us to watch kyle larson use these different lines to get himself back to the front he came in second He's back in 12th right now. So you can see right now, Junior, you keep talking about above that seam. Well, early in this run, he's already gone there. Look at the run he's going to get down the back straightaway. Man, that is the, that's fun. To me, that's some of the funnest thing you do behind the wheel of a car in the Cup Series is running that high line. And, these, and the tracks that provide it, they're the best ones, man. Closing in on the 88 now of Alex Bowman. The one thing that I've heard from 
Kyle, though, is he doesn't feel like he has to run the top as much this year. He's talked about how his cars are better. And then he thinks that he can, people are saying, hey, you run the bottom more often. He says, well, I can now. Last year, I was forced to go to the top to make that time. Look Check. how close that is right there. <laughs> wow. he's, he's, go, he's entering the turns at over 180 miles an hour, and he's about a foot away from the wall. Yeah, the closer you, closer you run there, the higher you enter, the more you're quicker you can get to that throttle and more speed you can carry so off the car. Just to be clear, the closer I am to the disaster, the better I'm going to be? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, I will, I will tell you that I thought that I was really good at running a high line, and we came here a couple years ago, and I saw Kyle out there in the race going in higher than me. And he would actually get to the end of the safer barrier and turn right because the safer, <laughs> the safer barrier goes away from the car. And then there's a there's a little bit of a gap to the fence, so he would drive toward the to the fence as soon as he got to the end of the safe bear, turn right, get back on the fence, and then enter the corner. And I'm like, that's insane. Why is he doing that? I tried it. I ran faster. So I mean, the the, the more you can widen that entry, and it's it's dirt. He learned. I mean, I think I don't know because I'm not a dirt racer, but I believe that he's learned that, and that's what you do on the cushion when you're running dirt. And you see all these dirt guys are really running that high line the best. We saw it yesterday in the Xfinity Series. There's a battle for six as Eric Jones had it, and Joey Logano wants to take it away. And Logano easily gets by the 20. There you go, Logano. He's one of the guys that I picked to run well today. He was sitting there inside the top 10, just inside the top 10. But the Penske cars have been fast all weekend. Still out front, it is a Ford party. Almirola, Harvick, Kozlowski, Kurt Busch, all in the top four. Enjoying Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Chicagoland Speedway. This telecast presented by Steel. And let's listen in to the 18 radio and just see how Kyle Busch feels about his car. Plowing, 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 plowing. So I lost count. Is that eight? <laughs> oh, but it's a lot. I, I mean, Kyle's such a great communicator with his team. But when things aren't right, he's going to, you know, we used a scale, one to ten. 
Right. Well, we tried. There were days that you went off scale. That he would just be says, off scale. He just says words more often, and that's, you know, that's why his crew chief knows that that's a serious concern. Um, you know, he doesn't wait. He doesn't mince. You know, right. He's take, he, he's, you're going to get, take, you know, you're going to get what you get with him. And but listen, you and I talked he, about that. I would tell you, listen, I don't need pleases and thank yous. Just tell me what yeah. I need. I don't have time for all that other stuff. No, yeah. No filter. Don't sugarcoat it. Well, guys, I talked to Kyle this morning, and he told me in one word. I said, "How's your car?" Junk. That was the answer. And and I'm like, I mean, listen, Steve and I've done this for a long time, Junior. We hear that every day. Like they all tell us, "Right, my car is no good. We're not gonna run good." And then they all do. And but he said it, and so far he's right. They just have not been close. Kelly. Rick, they've been a little bit more descriptive at times over the 18 radio a little while ago. Kyle saying that he needs more grip. He said, if there's a car 15 lengths in front of me, it just lifts up the front end like six inches, and I just lose the front end. I've got no grip. And then Adam Stevens said, look, I've got no interest in running 12th all day. When you bring it to me, we're going to work on it. Well, guess for the running 12th. Yeah, and surprisingly, there's two sides to Kyle Busch. Obviously, the racing side where he's very frustrated, but there's also the fan side. If you are parked in the infield of most racetracks that we go to, you might surprisingly have a Kyle Busch autograph on a flag. If you're if you're a Kyle Busch fan and you've got it out there, he will go at nights or, or when he has an off time, when he's not on the racetrack, he'll go around and meet fans and just sign autographs and say hello and say thank you. So there are definitely two sides to the driver of the 18. He talked about the car lifting up, the nose coming up when he got behind guys. So what that tells me, if I'm a driver, is that when he gets – in dirty air when he's when he's lacking downforce on the nose the shocks aren't holding the car down or either the stops are too soft and they're pushing the car up what is that what is what can you do for me see well it can be just a sensation so first let's talk dirty air so dirty air you're driving down the interstate you go behind the tractor trailer everybody's done that you feel it move your car around that is the tractor trailer in front of you disturbing the air well that's 70 miles an hour imagine 180 miles an hour that wake is unbelievable that's the dirty air you're talking about the unfortunate part, to your point, is adjustments. I have a whole list, but they're all in the garage. New shocks, new bump stops, different you know chassis settings. During the race, though, other than some air pressure and perhaps just freeing the car up, overall balance, there's not a lot I can do. The one thing I would be asking, what are your temps? Tape is free grip. There you if go. we can put a little tape on the grill, that's what I'd be looking for out of the 18. And on such a hot day, very difficult, you would think, to try to restrict the amount of air that gets to the engine. A lot of these guys will you know, practice and, and sort of understand where their temps are and see how aggressive they can be. And then during the race, the crew chief will ask every, you know, 20 or 50 laps, what's the temps? Can I add more tape? Because tape is going to make the car faster. Downforce on the nose is going to make the car better. If they can add some, they'll push it. They'll push the temperatures to some unrealistic numbers to try to improve the drivability of the car. Well, there's already some green tape on the nose of the 18, which tells me on a pit stop, they've already got one piece. You see it right there, that bright green tape? That right there is what they're adding, but here you go. A little tape on the grill, but you see it in the front of the car, bouncing around a little bit at this rough, difficult track.
later this month, NBC Sports Championship season continues as the world's best golfers buy for the coveted Claret Jug. Don't miss the Open. That's July 19th through the 22nd on Golf Channel and NBC. Closing in on maybe under 10 laps until we'll see green flag pit stops. Let's get a few updates. We start with Kelly. And we'll start at the front of the field there with Eric Almirola. We've been talking about this group and how well they've gelled this year. When I asked Johnny Klossmeyer about it, he said, look, a lot of us have worked together before. He and Eric know each other from back in the DEI days. And he said, we're all about the same age. We have a lot of the similar interests on and off the track. So this is just a group that's really come together. They enjoy working together. They have good laughs. And it's paying off also with some success here on track. Behind him is the four of Kevin Harvick, his teammate. Remember, he ran the Xfinity Series race yesterday, finished second. And when I asked him what he could take from that race to today's race, he said a lot of things, including kind of a rhythm that he gets to out on the track. He really learned the nuances of it, all the bumps. Those were valuable laps yesterday. Here Rick comes Harvick. Harvick on the high side now, and he's trying to take the lead away from Almirola. Harvick has changed his line in one and two. He's moved up the racetrack, and that's been working for him. He's inched up to Almirola. He seems to be better now. Now he's trying the middle of three and four. This is where, this is where Almirola is a little better than Harvick. Even with lap traffic, Almirola didn't lose much right there, but on the other end of the racetrack, Harvick's changed, and that's how he's running down. They worked by Timmy Hill. And that's 66, but Almirola now is going to search for some clear racetrack, maybe split these two lap cars, and he will right through the middle. That's a smart move by Eric. He's, he's, he knows he's got cars on the high side and the, low, and the low side, so he drove through the middle. Gained a little time there on Harvick. It's how you get through these lap cars is what's really going to matter whether Harvick gets an opportunity to take this position. So See how do you care how Almirola lost the bottom? Harvick was able to carry around the corner longer He's going to get a run down this, front, down this front straightaway. Harvick's car is just handling a little bit better right now. Eric's spotter is telling him where Harvick's running. Eric's probably watching where Harvick's running. Here comes Harvick with a great run through the center. A lot of momentum that time as he entered. Turns one and two down the back stretch. He has the momentum, but not able to get to the back bumper of that 10. Let's see if he can do it through the middle of three and four. And it's just a matter of time, especially with Harvick running that higher line. He's got it figured out. Eric has been on the bottom. So he, if he goes to the top, he needs a couple corners to sort of set that up. Get in a rhythm there. And oh, there he goes. Yeah, now moves up the racetrack. So he'll See? try to take that line away. All right, so now Harvick has to change his line. He, if he, you know, he doesn't want to run directly behind Eric because that's going to be in dirty air and he's going to lose the nose. He didn't gain anything there because of the line that Eric ran. So. Very smart by Eric to try to move up a little bit, fill that out. He moved up just a little. He Mike. likes his car on the bottom here, though, so he's not trying to give that up. He doesn't think he can get any better on the top in three and four, like you said earlier, Jeff. Yeah, Junior, I think the interesting thing is for Harvick right now, he's trying to anticipate where is going to go. So he wants to go where he isn't. So he saw Almirola the lap before go to the middle, so he's going to try something else. He went to the bottom, but it's not going to work. Almirola's just a little bit stronger. That's right. I think that move by Eric to try to, you know, that was a smart, gutsy move. I know it doesn't seem like anything big, but it really is, because look at the difference now. Since Eric's moved to that middle groove in one and two, he's gained a little speed, and he's sort of balanced out this battle, really ended it. Marty. The window is open, guys. Green flag stops happening. Joey Logano coming to pit road. He told Todd Gordon, he said, I think chassis wise, we're not that bad. I've been sitting in traffic. That's my biggest problem. So Todd Gordon made the call to bring him to pit road early here. You see Martin Trek Jr. Cole Pern making that same call that paid off for them last time to get those fresh tires on Denny Hamlin. Also leaving pit road, he told his crew, don't have any more problems on pit road. Remember, they got blocked in last time by the 42. All these guys wanting to come as soon as they could, including Kyle Larson. No mention of those electrical problems he drove from 16th to 7th but on his own on the racetrack so no changes to that 42 car a little bit of an air pressure adjustment but no chassis changes to the 42 and so far no issues here this time either when he comes to a stop on pit road kelly well we saw kevin harvick try to make a couple moves there on now eric almarola just couldn't get to him kevin harvick's been saying throughout this race that he is just too tight to begin with, but he gets better over the long run. It's going to be four tires feel and an air pressure adjustment for the four, Marty. Brad Kozlowski spent that entire right. run in the third position. He said the car is just way too tight on entry and on exit. A little bit long on the right side for them. You see that wedge adjustment being made. Also an air pressure adjustment trying to free up Brad Kozlowski in that two car, Kelly. 
Eric Almirola continues to lead this race, but he'll bring that 10 Smithfield Foods car to pit road. He seems like he's been pretty happy with this 10 car, although I did hear mention of a potential air pressure adjustment for the rear of the car. You're also going to give him those four fresh Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. Now the real race for this lead is going to be when the 10 comes off of pit road. The four is already on the racetrack and up to speed just coming out of turn four. We'll see how close it is. Again, those two are fighting for the lead before these green flag pit stops. And there's a 10 car on pit road and here comes the four car. So the four car pitted a little bit earlier, which means he had fresher tires, made some lap time up and goes by Eric Amarola for what will eventually be the lead once all this cycles around. So obviously Amarola, because this is a big gap that he got him by. It wasn't a little bit. So this is more than just fresher tires. I think Harvick may have gotten on pit road a little bit better, maybe had a better pit stop. Pit stop. That's a big gap. Green flag pit stop cycling through. Right now it's Jamie McMurray that's out front, but Harvick wins on pit road. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Credit One Bank, the credit card perfect for everyday purchases. Toyota, let's go places. Coca-Cola, the official fan refreshment of NASCAR. And by Steel. Are you ready for a steal? It's Champions Park and Freedom Walk celebrating from Civil War all the way forward on this 4th of July weekend. And there's a yellow flag right there. And we also have one on the racetrack. The first non-stage yellow flag that has come out. Well, Steve, who is the big winner in that caution? This could not be a bigger break for Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer was down two laps after the pit debacle in the first stage, all those speeding penalties. He ran 72 laps, down two laps, Great call on top of the pit box, the leader's pit. We're going to stay out as long as we can, hope for a yellow. He got a yellow. Let's take a listen in. Back in the game, boys. Get a fight there, driver. Appreciate it. Those are some blazing times. He you heard it. very well. Debris is the reason for this caution, by the way, Steve. Rick, I bring it up because so many times we think it's a great pass or a great pit stop. Sometimes it could just be a little lucky break, Dale, right? Good strategy and a lucky yellow can change your whole day. That's right. Puts him right back in the game, and he's got his three teammates in first, second, and third place. I mean, they're they're fast today, so he's still got a chance to win this race.
And here come the race leaders or those that are on the lead lap coming back to pit road. Dave. Rick Kurt Busch very quick in third but needs a little bit of adjustment. The car has gone back to the tight side after being loose for the first time on the last run. Kelly. Kevin Harvick was not happy with this car on that short run. He said terrible, terrible, terrible. He said it was just plowing tight. They're going to go back on an air pressure adjustment, hand him a water bottle, and his other teammate, Eric Almirola, in that tank car said he was watching Kevin Harvick, and he thought Harvick's rear end was breaking loose. Almirola says his car was pretty good. Four tires and fuel and an air pressure adjustment for the 10. Maybe a little pit road strategy there. As we look at the race off pit road, Blaney only two tires. Gaining 10 spots in track position. Almirola, Kurt Busch, Kevin Harvick, and Chase Elliott, the top five. Laps down early in the run, but he's back on the lead lap now. So you have to go Fantasy Live, NASCAR Fantasy Live, make a decision. Are you going to keep him in the garage? Are you going to put him in the lineup? You have to make that decision by the end of stage two. Only 30 more laps to go. Dale, I'm not sure now. I thought for sure he wasn't going to recover, but he's done it. Now I'm thinking I might need him back in my lineup. Yeah, you go put him back in your lineup. I'm trying to decide between Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin. Those guys are just kind of sitting around just outside the top ten, and I can't figure out which one's going to have the better day. So one in the garage and one on the start grid here for me. He spent 72 laps, two laps down because of the issues on pit road. And now, after getting the free pass, he's back on the lead lap and definitely back in contention because he's been one of the fastest cars all day. Yeah, we talked about how hot it is here today. And how do you deal with that as a driver? Well, check out Kyle Larson. He's got a bag. It's full of ice. He unzips his uniform. He gets it on his chest, right at his heart, to try to get his whole body temperature down. That's really all you can do. He's asked to get these bags of ice all day long just to try to get his body temp down. Bags coming back out, I think. Get it down in there. Let's take a look at this thermometer in Kurt's car. This is the start of it at 106 degrees. I mean, it's pretty hot, right? And as we get going, as the race gets going, right now it's 152 degrees. So, I mean, this, all that heat coming from the brakes, coming from the engine, Come from the exhaust running underneath the car. All that's going to soak into the interior of the car. Currently at 143 degrees, so it cools down a little bit under caution. And now, under those tough conditions, all these drivers are going to have to really be on their toes on this restart because look who's on the front row. We have Ryan Newman, who stayed on the racetrack on old tires. We have the 12 of Ryan Blaney on two tires. A very difficult racetrack, Dale, to get powered down. That 41, the 10. These are the types of restarts where we see them stack up. Two tires. What a call. Two tires and no tires. This yeah. is going to be exciting. That no tires. It's so hard to get even launched, just trying to get 
the rear tires to hook up. Let's see if that outside line doesn't get stacked up. Field approaching the Geico restart zone as we get ready to go again after this, the second caution of the day. How are the two tires going to work? Ryan Blaney trying to hold off the 31 on the outside. He doesn't have fresh tires like the field behind him. Here comes Al Marola, a little wiggle as he goes by Newman. Kurt Busch on the outside. Too wide for second. Al Marola has it. Here comes the four of Harvick. What a pass on the bottom of the track. Surprised that two tires are doing as well as they are. I mean, if I'm coming down pit road, I'm getting four tires every time. At least I'm begging for them. I can't believe they took two tires, Steve. What's 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 the call there? Listen, I'm shocked. I didn't agree with this call. I thought you had to have four tires. I didn't think staying out would work. I didn't think two tires would work. Ryan Blaney is proving me wrong, putting a nice set of laps together. Now it's obvious Al Marola is catching him quickly, Marty. But at this point, it's just about track position. Steve, it's also kind of where you were running before. Ryan Blaney was kind of stuck back around 10th or so and just really not making the progress he thought. So he told Jeremy Bowens, listen, if I can get up front, I might have a shot at it. So that was the call for two tires. As long as I don't go back further than 10th, it's kind of a win for this 12 car. And what makes that gamble possible is it's a de defined run. They know it's only 26 to go to the end of the stage. This is how stage racing has yep. changed the calls. And you got to have it a good enough car to be able to make this call. And they have the they have the belief in what they've seen in their car and the speed they've seen in their car to do this. Look at this move by Kurt Busch jumping up on the outside, trying to catch these two. Will he make it three wide? I thought he had a big enough run to try to do it. Big wiggle there out of Ryan Blaney, allowing the 10 of Al Marola to get by. But here comes Kurt Busch. Busch takes over second as well. Al Marola back out front. Kurt Busch running second. Now, Ryan Blaney trying to hang on. Just behind him, Kevin Harvin. And the guy who's been running right up against the wall, Kyle Larson, back there in fifth. Well, he heard him have to pedal. He heard him come off the throttle. He got tight, lost the bottom, and he had to come back off the throttle of Kurt Busch did to keep him getting into the wall. While well, this is going on, Eric Almarola, man, he's putting down some laps. Driving away from these guys. Harvick back in fourth place, kind of stuck behind Blaney. Blaney's only got eight laps on his left side tires, so that's that's why he's hanging in there pretty well. So Harvick's going to go to the top, try to get a run off of turn four to be able to try to make the pass down the front straightaway. Doesn't gain quite enough. A little bit of a run here. But this is good for Eric Amarola because I think that he feels Harvick is his toughest competition right now. He's going to look a little bit further back and maybe think Boyer might still be some tough competition because Boyer after getting back on the lead lap has moved up to 15th already. He's at 15th and he ran the fifth fastest lap on the racetrack that last lap way back there in traffic and Jeff the further back you go the tougher it is with that dirty air to make time. Oh it's so much harder with with dirty air trying to get up through the front but Clint Boyer with what he's gone through this is great man he's been two laps down it's been a ton of time two laps down he just it's like having a new life a new chance to make something happen so he just feels good he's not going to be complaining a lot right now that, right. Lap, that lap right there he's fourth fastest of the field and he's pat and he's in traffic passing cars I mean once he gets up in clean air in the top three maybe the best car here today 13th to 12th now as he just went by the pole winner. Everybody up to third or fourth place right now. This time they keep mowing them down. <laughs> keep mowing them down. That's exactly what Clint Boyer is doing. We got a we got a unique camera today in the four car with Harvick. We're gonna look down here at the pedals, see how he's using the gas and the brake and all that stuff. We always watched Kevin for years back when we had an association with them at Hendrick Motorsports. We'd get the information and be able to see his his laps and see what he's doing with the throttle and always was amazed by how much throttle he used and how smooth he was coming off the throttle and the thing about that is Steve when I when I watch him get down in the corner he'll come off the gas real slow a lot of guys jump out of the throttle he comes off real slow that's really slow a lot of guys pop that throttle hard and he'll he'll obviously get feathering that throttle back down trying to get drive off at a rough and slick racetrack but he lifts kind of slow and I think that it's because you set the car easier it's, it's critical for him to set the car on the stops real smoothly. Well, these cars don't want to change directions. They also want to change speed. If you jump out of the gas, it changes how it handles. Kelly? Hey, see if there could be trouble for the leader, Eric Almarola. Have a listen. 
They said it looked like they got everything tight when they watched the video down here, but just now Eric said it's getting really bad. I've got to come in. So we're going to have to see the leader, Eric Almirola, come to pit road to fix that loose wheel. So, Steve, these guys, oh, here he comes. He's coming to pit road. He's sure that he's got a loose wheel. He just ran the fastest lap of anybody the last lap, and he thought he had a loose wheel. Yeah, but I like this call, Rick. We've already seen Clint Boyer make up two laps. It's early in the race. Don't stay out there, damage the studs, potentially end your day. Eric Amarola is a race car driver. He knows what a loose wheel feels like. Come down and live to fight later in the race as they stop in front of the box there, Kelly. And Eric Amarola actually tried to feel it out for a couple laps since he first reported the loose wheel, but that last time around, he finally just said, look, it's getting so bad, it's really bad in the turns. We're going to give him four fresh good years, and now he's on his way. Man, that's incredible that he was able to still run as fast as he was with such an issue because when that wheel becomes loose, it affects the grip, it affects the balance of the car, and it scares you. You know, you think the wheel's going to come off at any moment, and that is the tough, that's one of the toughest calls that a driver will make during the race. Do I come down pit road? Is this, is this really a loose wheel? Have I slung a weight off? A driver doesn't want to come down pit road, leading a race especially, and give up all that track position and find out that that was not a loose wheel. But Steve, these guys have all kinds of technology now, pressure sensors even, that when they they know that the wheels are tighter, they know they got lugs tight. So tell us about that. Well, they do. So basically they can look at the air pressure that goes through the gun and see every time they tighten a lug nut, it shows up in data. But I like the call. Listen, that's a moment in time where you build trust between driver and crew chief. And even though I have the data, I'm not going to argue with you. If you feel it's loose, I'm going to Commit to you. Whatever you say, if you come to pit road, we're going to believe you. Yeah, so, I, I think too. You know, part of that, part of that equation for 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 for, for, for that decision was how many laps till the stage. That's what you heard him say, right? If they would have said five, he'd have wrote it out. But when they told him the number, he said, "I can't go that far." And that's a, that is, Junior. I think that is the toughest decision to make. Leading a race and coming down pit road, not 100% knowing, you have to trust yourself, though, and make that tough call. Yeah, the other thing, too, is if they do find out that they did have a loose wheel, very smart call by the driver. And one of the reasons why is because if you stayed out and, and did even make it to the end of the stage, I mean, that's, that's, that's great, but you could beat up the studs on that loose, on that loose stud. You could beat the, beat the stud, beat the threads off of it, and then you don't get the next one right. tight. You're you, done. You got it. Yeah. They're going to keep getting loose. They're gonna, every wheel you put on there is going to come loose. Well, the one thing you want as a driver when you make that call is you want someone to tell you there was something wrong. Look at Greg Zepidelli looking at this tire. He sees something.
You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Chicagoland Speedway. It's telecast presented by Steel. Battle for the lead continues to heat up. Kurt Busch in front of Kevin Harvick. But Kurt Busch closing the gap now. Harvick right on his back bumper. Kurt Busch closing that line down, trying to make sure that Harvick doesn't have a, a, an open line to get by. Again, teammates, but when they're out on the racetrack, they're fighting for their team. Yeah, eight well, laps to go. I was just getting ready to say that. Only eight laps to go. This is for a stage win. See Harvick once again changing his line, trying to anticipate what Kurt Busch is doing. That's so hard, and Kurt Busch knows that. Kurt Busch is going to change up and give him something different every lap. Now he's got a little bit of a gap, Junior, so now he just runs wherever he thinks he's the fastest. Don't worry about what Harvick's doing because he's far enough back, but when Harvick gets a little closer, then you try to take his line away. Yeah, the other thing, too, is to get a little distance as the leader, as Kurt did. He could try a different line just as he did in that corner. He can move up a little bit and see if that's a little better without worrying, you know, sacrificing the loss of position here. Hey, Junior, Kurt Busch has stage points in every race except two this season, including two stage wins. So they've been very good at running up front. And once again, Kurt Busch trying to hold on to what's his. You guys, guys, I just got word. Sorry, Rick, I just got word. We could confirm that was a loose wheel. Kelly went and confirmed it on the 10. So great decision by Eric Amarola to pit. And actually, in this position, he's in position for the uh, free pass. So great decision. Shouldn't hurt the rest of his day. Yeah, with only a few laps to go in this stage, it looks like Amarola will get the free pass. Be able to get himself back into this battle for the win. Continue his career day. They're lucky. <laughs> these two out front, though, are lucky that they can't see in their mirror the 42 who has been riding along the wall and closing the gap every lap. Kyle Larson has been very strong in this stage, at least the closing laps of this stage, closing in on these top two. Currently running in the third position now as Kurt Busch pulling away just a bit now from the four. Marty. Yeah, Rick, an impressive rally for the 42 of Kyle Larson. Remember those electrical issues earlier when he came to pit road. At that moment, he went out 16th, drove his way to 7th, restarted this run in 7th. Now he is in 3rd, running the high line, running the low line, everything, Jeff. That is a difficult thing to have to come back through the field kind of twice today for Kyle Larson at 42. That's what speed will do for you, Marty. It allows you to recover from problems. And this 42 car, along with the Stuart Haas cars, they've proven to be the fastest cars all day long. And, you know, we've seen it with Boyer. He had a little bit of a break, but now he's driving himself up. Will we see it from Almirola? Better drive himself back up, being able to recover from these problems. I tell you what, Jeff, another, I'm going to give this a call. The race so far, Jeremy Bullins in this 12. As good a call as it was for Clint Boyer to get back in the lead lap, this call might pay off for Ryan Blaney. Running test, Marty reported, they decided to only take two tires. They started as the leader, but they've only fallen back to fifth. That's plus five spots, Dale. That's free five spots for the driver. Yeah, it's a, it's a good call. I mean, with eight laps on the tires, worth a gamble. I didn't think it was going to work out for him. I thought that that, you know, but they, they've shown speed. They've shown enough speed to be able to utilize that clean air early in that run as they were in the top two, three, and four. It's paid off, and I'm taking notes. If I'm a crew chief on pit road, about eight laps on the left side tire, it seems like works okay, Jeff. Yeah, I, I thought that was a great call. I didn't think it was a good call, but it's proven to be a really, really good call. That's a tough call at this kind of racetrack because the track is so abrasive and it eats those tires up, almost like Darlington is what it makes me think of in Atlanta. Another guy, Ryan Newman, you know, they stayed completely out. They didn't even pit. He came in 19th. And, you know, when he was running 19th when that caution came out, he's 17th right now. So both of those guys make difficult decisions, and I think it's going to work out for both of them. There's one and two. And now the white flag comes out one more time around for stage two. This is the final lap of stage two. Big run. Here comes the four on the high side with momentum. It'll be a great battle. As they go through three and four, Kurt Busch, is he going to be able to hold off Kevin Harvick? No. Through the middle of the track. <laughs> he ain't. <laughs> Harvick, momentum. Can he keep it up? The four takes him all the way up to the wall. And Kevin Harvick's going to win. Wow, that was awesome. Man, I love stage <laughs> racing. That was awesome. <laughs> That was so fun. I can't help. I got, I'm trying to stay quiet there. <laughs> was a, jumped up on the outside and didn't give. He gave him no room. Pulled all the air off the side of him.
you know, with the stage win at hand, he didn't run up there by the wall. He got his left side on Kurt Busch's right side, pulled the air off of him, stole that win. The closer. That's right. He closed it. <laughs> he closed That's what I'm talking about. Two. When they talk about teammates, I don't want to hear about teammates. I want to hear about winning. Look at this run. Teammates, nope, throw that out the window. They're fighting for that stage point, that playoff point. It's on the line. All the way up against the wall, Harvick wins it. Yeah, we got to give them drivers a little. Here's Kurt Busch at the end of that stage. Championship. What the? I mean, really? Really? That's a teammate right there, everybody. Tuning in to NBC Live. That's what a teammate does. Never expected that from a teammate. Never expected it. Wow. You're racing. It's a stage win, man. You're racing. Very important. Field now on pit road. When Kurt regained his composure, he told his team, a little tight in the center, a little loose off. I need a water bottle, and they'll give him four tires of fuel, Kelly. Kevin Harvick started by saying, that change was way bad. We're way loose. After the Kurt Busch pass, he said, all right, it's just a little loose. Still, they're going to make a chassis adjustment and air pressure adjustment, Marty. Third and fourth, once again, pitting right beside each other. Martin Truex Jr. said, I don't know what to do to make the situation any better. I'm going to do my best to get around the 42 on pit road. A little free on exit for Kyle Larson. He wants water and ice as well. Their first wedge adjustment of the day for Truex. He worked his way around Ryan Blaney. He said, I was tight there, but got looser the longer we ran. He said, I'm hoping that car gets a little bit better on the long run. Incredible battle off of pit road. You saw Truex, Larson, Kozlowski, Blaney all knotted up as they were coming off of pit road. Let's see if we can chat with Kevin Harvick, the stage two winner. Hey, Kevin, burned up in the booth. You with us? Yeah, I got you. Man, that was an exciting stage in to get that win right there. Tell us about it. Yeah, you know, it's just all about hitting your marks right. You know, Kurt was doing a good job of getting the bottom. I tried the very top. Felt like I needed a run where I ran into one and two just to have a chance to stay even. And found some grip down here and, and was able to make it stick. So, you know, I just had to go where he wasn't. And that's the cool part about this racetrack. So just uh, 
keep clicking away, everything's going okay. Man, that was a great move. It was fun to watch. Tell us about the conditions, though. It is so hot. You doing okay? I'm doing good. I'm old, Bert, so, you know, I got to keep my eyes clean, my face cool, um, do everything I can to stay cool. I got about four extra vents in here, so they do a good job taking care of me. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely hot, but it's summertime, so we'd expect it to be hot. Hey, Harvick, old guy's rule, bud. Have fun, man. Stand for Thank you. He's not that old, 42 years old from Bakersfield, California. Kevin Harvick wins stage two. This coming Friday, we are doing something totally fun. When we go to Daytona, NASCAR America will have Fan Friday. That's going to be live from Daytona with Rutt, Dale Jr., guys like Denny Hamlin, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Bubba Wallace, Austin Dillon, all be up on stage. Fans definitely come out and enjoy Fan Friday with Rutt and Dale Jr. Let's check on Rutt. Rick, I'm here at the Peacock pit box and it's not just heating up out on the track i asked fans to send me some tweets using hashtag hey rut see what they're doing check it out dr barbecue ray lamp showed me he's working on this beautiful chicago style italian beef you know he's the man because it's dr barbecue uh fellas i wish i could get some of that brought up to the booth but i don't think i got time well, you got time we have about 101 laps to go i got a question how Night did time. rutledge get his head on the logo dale jr you got nothing I know. Well, I just want people to know that that I mean, was Rutledge's face. I mean, look at There's Rutledge. Now let's bring the graphic up. We'll compare it to Rut. I mean, this is. Oh, it's very similar. This is spectacular. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you really. Kyle, I mean, you got to work your deal. You got to put your own face There's on here. No, yeah. It is a big head. Oh, look. See? Look. There that matters. Okay. Oh. Everybody see? I mean, I Close can your hear eyes, everything Rutt. you guys are saying. Close your eyes, Rut. We know, Rut. We love you. <laughs> okay. A lot of fun. That will be a great time. Make sure if you're in the Daytona area to come out to fame. Friday. But you talk fun. All right, Junior, two stages are complete, 100 to go in this race. You're going to have to be a little easy on my left shoulder here. Yeah, you hit well, it about every pass for the lead. I get, a, I get a Charlie horse race. It's, it's been such a great race. I mean, we've had a race for the lead pretty much all day long. Domination by SHR. Almarola has got his lucky dog back. He's, he got the lucky dog this past uh, caution, so he's back in the race. Here's a little bit of a battle for the win. The big pass, turn three and four. Harvick going to the outside. Like you said, going where he's not, going for that clean air. You get on that quarter panel, Kirk can't get in the gas, he'll drive in the door of the four car. So my question now though, Junior, now they're lined up on the front row for this restart. What's it gonna look like in turn one on this restart? 
The bottle has been the best, but the control car, Harvick, he's in the outside. So if he can get down, you know, get the throttle down, then he's going to get this, uh, get this lead off of two. All right, field coming into the Geico restart zone. Harvick on the outside. Kurt Busch on the inside. A little help from the 78. Martin Truex Jr. is going to shove the 41 into one. Harvick tried to get back to him, but got tight off a of turn two. And he's going to have a battle. He's going to have his hands full with Larson, who's back in the mix. Larson able to clear Harvick. Harvick now trying to get back up to speed. Now, Harvick's not in his preferred line. He wants to be on the bottom. He knows where's that, that's where the speed is on the early part of the run. Really surprised that Kurt got as good as a start he did. And Truex, the guy in, in the second row, that was critical to be able to help Kurt get down into turn one and get the lead. All right, crew chief, are we going to see this stage get broken into equal parts? Well, I think that's the obvious choice. It's basically 100 to go. You run 50 laps, you come to pit road, put four fresh tires, run 50 more. It's pretty simple to call, unless, of course, we start to get a few yellows and it gets complicated. <laughs> yes. Kozlowski a little bit outside of that 12 of Ryan Blaney. Here comes Chase Elliott in the nine. Chase having a pretty good day. This has been a great track for him. Finished here second last year, the year before third. Expected him to have a pretty decent day. That had been moved by, by Hamlin. Taking the air off of the 12, the 12 of Ryan Blaney got sideways. Hamlin aggressive to the bottom and just drove to the back of the 12 car, trying to take the air off the back of his car, and he did. He just couldn't quite make the pass, but Clint Boyer filled that hole. Here comes a race for the lead. Kyle Larson to the inside, all the way down to the grass. Larson trying to take the lead away. He does. The 42's in front. Right, this is a little bit different than yesterday. Larson didn't have the early run speed. He does today. I mean, if he needs to go fast at the start of the run, you can see he's got the speed. He's got to have a lot of confidence, confidence in his car. On the long run, he's going to have the top. Whoa, the Truex. 78, the big slide. <laughs> Tried to make the pass, couldn't hang on to it. Here comes Kyle, or Kurt Busch back again, trying to hang on to second. Now Kevin Harvick has got back up to speed. He's in his preferred line, fighting for that third spot now. I don't think they want to let Larson get too far out. His well, speed out front is probably large, so they need to get this settled between the three of them. Jeff, to go back to what Dale said, if, if I'm Kyle Larson's crew chief, I want a car that is good on new tires because I think he can help me on old tires by going to the yeah. top of the racetrack. I didn't think Larson had the early run speed. He didn't have it yesterday, but he still won the race because he could run well on the long run on the boards. And we're seeing it right now. He's talked about it. He loves the way his car's been running this year, being able to run the bottom more often. Race three aren't finished. Oh, they, this is a great battle. Harvick just takes second away. Kurt struggling just a little bit. Balance his car's changed just a little bit since his pit stop. That's, that happens. Sometimes you don't make any changes. Your car can be a little bit tighter, a little bit looser, depending on the set of tires you get on. And we heard his frustration at the end of that stage with Harvick going around him on the outside. Now his car's not handling well. That frustration is not going to go down. It's only going to get higher. Kevin Harvick a little bit faster that lap. He's going to try to track down Larson, and he's coming. Harvick doesn't want Larson to get too far out in front of him. Right now, it's 0.4 seconds. The gap between one and two. Kurt Busch back down to fourth. He's 1.2 seconds behind race leader Larson. Well, you called him the closer. This is Kevin Harvick in a nutshell. His career has been about the second half of these races, and you can see the four car has made improvements. Even earlier in the day, he couldn't quite reach Eric Amarola. Then it was Clint Boyer. Now look at this, Rick, to the outside of the 42. And this is something that Kyle Larson hasn't seen a lot of, somebody going higher on the racetrack than he's going. How will he react? Will he move up the track? He's, he's been using the bottom of three and four. Harvick's going to do basically what he did in the end of that last stage and try to get his quarter panel, but can't make it happen. Will Larson change his line down here in turn one to combat what Harvick's been able to do to close in? And remember, they're doing this all while it's over 150 degrees in the cockpit of these cars. It's been over two and a half hours already. They've been racing. Still, 92 laps to go, and they're fighting for the lead. Here comes Harvick to the inside. 
dives to the inside through three, and Harvick takes the lead away. But Larson immediately went to his high groove. He didn't go to the middle. He went to the top top, thinking that was going to give him this straightaway speed to make a challenge getting back into one. He's got a great run here, but he's not going to be able to really do nothing with it. to get. He's going to go to the bottom here. He's committed to that bottom. I'm really surprised because we know Larson loves the top. I'm just waiting for him right here to put it on the boards in one and two and take the lead back. It's going to the boards this corner. I can about guarantee you I'd be <laughs> shocked if he didn't go up to the top in three and four. No, he doesn't. He goes to the bottom. Dives down to the bottom with the 42, and the caution has come out. The 11 of Denny Hamlin fired up later than four. coming out of turn two, turned around and inside on that inside wall. Get it rolling here. This is frustrating because I left Denny in my lineup Oh! Kyle is in the garage. I know that was probably a terrible move. Oh! Got a tire later than one. Kyle Busch should not be in anyone's garage. Let's count on Denny today. Hopefully, yeah, rebound. Check see, check to see if the tires are flat spotted, he said. Now let's take a look inside the car from the helmet cam and see what happened. Get down. He's running the high side. He's up against the fence here on the seam. He's got the left side on the seam. Going back to the gas, he's loose. He just gets loose up there. That was really interesting because you expect to have a lot more lateral grip up on the high side running that line. And I wonder if he had the left sides on that on that seam just a little bit so too much. Explain the seam. You talk about the seam. That's just like tar they've put in where the pavement separates. And they kind of catch you. They're slick for the car to go across. Yeah, if the tires touch those seams, we've heard that they're a lot worse than they've been in the past as this track ages. Uh, that, that's that's what you'll have. You'll, it's very similar to Fontana off a of turn two, and you don't you don't want to have a tire on those seams for an extended period of time. It doesn't look like the left sides are there, but maybe the left front was, and it actually gained a little bit grip or hooked the car somehow. It's very surprising, Dave. Nine of Chase Elliott up to five. It is coming around late in this race. Chase is doing fine as well. Just asked for a cold drink. Four tires, no adjustments. Kelly. Kevin Harvick said that he was hitting the ground really bad when he was trying to run flat out up top. Other than that, he said the balance was pretty good. Four tires and fuel. Kyle Larson comes into a stall middle of your screen. He does not want any changes to the car. He does, however, once again want water and ice inside the car. It is hot in these cars, as we've talked about. Martin Truex Jr. trying a little bit of a different strategy. You see he's closer to the end line of their pit stall. Going to be four tires, no changes for him. He said he was a little bit tighter at the at the uh, beginning of that run. Joey Logano, though, with two tires, Rick. He'll win the race off pit road. Here comes that strategy poll again. Logano with two tire change. Moves up eight positions. Kyle Busch up four as well. Great pit stop.
It's the earliest that a race has ever been run at Chicagoland Speedway, and the fans are getting a great show. The stage one winner, Eric Almarola. Stage two goes to Kevin Harvick on an incredible pass on the very last lap. Who's going to win the race? Who's going to win the race, Rick? That's going to be determined by restarts. If we get late race restarts, we see it all the time. It matters. Watch this last restart. Martin Truex Jr. does a great job. This has turned into an art. He knows when he needs to launch, and his whole goal right here is to actually help Kurt Busch get into the back of him, push him. Harvick's got a great, great restart. Larson's not helping him at all. So right now, Truex is pushing him, pushes him into the lead. What does Truex do, though, with five to go on a restart? Does he try to make it three wide? His goal there was to push the 41 to try to help himself. He did not have to get any more aggressive because it's still 87 to go, Kelly. One team that opted to stay out that 10 of Eric Almarola. The car's good. They just need track position. On top of that, they have just one set of sticker tires remaining, Steve. Yeah, actually, Kelly, that makes perfect sense. I was wondering why they stayed out. Remember that loose wheel, Dale? Not only did it cost them a lap, but it burned that set of tires. They couldn't pit. This is a great call to try to get even with the rest of the field. Even if they lose a little track position here, they're now evened up with 87 to go. And I like it. He's not alone. He's got a couple guys around him in the same situation. So he, he should be able to hang in there and hang tough there. Marty. And Brad Kozlowski decided to stay out there. Paul Wolf making that call. So they're actually a set up on everybody else, Steve. And he said the car's the best it's been all day. So that was one reason they stayed out. So they have two sets left with this two car that they can use for the rest of the race. 14 laps difference. The tires between Kozlowski, Almirola, and the rest of the field. We'll see how much that will affect this restart. Logano on the back bumper of the 10. Now he dives to the inside. He'll try to take the lead away as they go into one. Two Penske cars, one and two. Keselowski out front. Logano running second. Four wide down the back straightaway. It's a tough situation for Eric. He's lost a ton of spots here getting put three wide by Logano, but Logano wasn't going to push him like Truex has been pushed to push 41 on the last restart. Logano's going for it. He's aggressive. He wanted that lead. Whenever you have a guy that stays out on tires like that, somebody always gets stuck behind him. In that case, it was Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer now back to 12. He just could not get around his teammate of Amarillo. Some new players up front. Dale Jr., I got to hand it to you. All weekend, you've been talking 22 and 9. Hey, Here they are. Look who's up front. <laughs> and Kyle Busch. Remember, he said how bad his car was? Plowing. A plowing, few times. plowing, 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 many plowings. And now he, there he is. <laughs> well, he gave him the critical amount of information he needed. <laughs> they needed to make that adjustment. Plowing, plowing, plowing. Critical information. Drivers. Drew X had a bad stop. He did, they just had a bad stop on pit road, so he's going to have to work his way back to the front. Harvick going around the 22 on the outside. Harvick has been aggressive. He has been taking spots away from people. He took one away from Kurt Busch, and that spot meant that he would win stage two. Now, running through the middle of the racetrack, he sets his sights on the two of Keselowski. Ran right about the same lap time this past lap, but Harvick's obviously closing in here. He's got way more speed. Brad on the old tires. Won't be long before Harvick's back in the lead. But nobody behind him with new tires is coming coming along for that, you know, coming along on that train. So Harvick's going to be able to put an impressive lead here on the field if we get a lot more laps to go. Yeah, with 82 to go, that's scary, right? Yeah. Because if he gets all the, here's the move right here. Look at how much momentum he carries off the top. Brad, Brad tries to hold him off. Brad was sliding up so fast yeah. that Harvick <laughs> had to lift because he didn't know whether Brad was going to take so him So he out. didn't lift for him. He no. left to leave He's Brad like, whoa, 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 whoa. The two cars coming up. Yeah, Brad Keselowski got loose at the bottom of the racetrack. Harvick saw it, but Harvick still takes the lead away from Keselowski. So it's Harvick, Keselowski, Logano. Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch. He says 15 minutes out. Right now, there's some crew chiefs that are looking at the radar because there is a weather system that is coming in from the west and southwest that could potentially affect if we get the rest of these 81 laps in. Yeah, Rick, you talked about weather. I've been kind of watching it. You can never take the crew chief hat on, and it's a pretty impressive line of thunderstorms 
And, you know, it only takes one pop-up shower to see the two Penske cars here battle. Obviously, the 22 of Joey Logano has better tires. So we've been hearing a little bit of that on the radio. One pop-up shower can change the course. And I think that's some of the reason why we're seeing the intensity. You see right here, Dale, I mean, it's normal mid Midwest, right? A thunderstorms in the Midwest. You see how defined that line is as it gets closer. Obviously, the racetrack right there in the circles. Hey, and, Steve, I think that adds to the strategy of Kevin Harvick right now because – he needs to build as much space as he can because if that, if you start having to make a decision, are we going to pit or not under green because right. the weather's coming, that makes that decision easier. Making gap between first and second gives the crew chief a little more option. And if, they, if you look behind Harvick, who's who's behind him? Where's his teammates? Those are the guys that have been up front all day long. They're, they're, they've had trouble. And now we got the Pinsky cars. Kyle Busch and those guys, but they haven't been able to keep pace with him, so Harvick's driving off. Marty. And Junior, to add to the weather, it's gotten a lot windier, and you see the cloud cover as well, and a lot of drivers saying that's changing the racetrack. So that's something you got to throw into the mix too, Steve, right? The weather is coming. The racetrack is changing. Certainly a lot different than when we started this race. Much cooler out here. Well, my experience is as racetracks cool, the front tires gain grip. Maybe that's what's helped the 18. We heard, what, nine plowings between adjustments. The track might be coming to him because the 18 is no longer a mid-pack car. He has worked his way up. This pass on the 22 be for the second position. Kyle Busch trying to take that high side. A little bit of a fire on the three of Austin Dill in the right front. He is on pit road right now. Yeah, that's the situation right there. Looks like a brake problem. And yeah, I would agree. You know, it's hot. It's hot here today, and these brakes are going to probably suffer more than they've ever suffered all year long. Guys are going to have brake issues. These cars don't have a lot of drag, don't have a lot of engine braking. You're going to have to use the brakes to slow the cars down. Obviously, they haven't, they haven't had their package built around cooling it enough. and Well, this guy right here, the 42 of Kyle Larson, he complained about brake fade in practice. Sure did. So this isn't new for everybody as he makes a big move going around Chase Elliott. Some guys are lucky to have that issue in practice and be able to adjust. And unfortunately, it looks like Dylan's going to be pushing his car behind the wall. And look who else is coming into the picture. Just behind that 42, the 78. We started the show off talking about the big three, Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Martin Truex Jr. Well, right now, they're running first, second, and sixth. And Truex Jr. still on the move. Yeah, Martin keeps having to dig himself out of a hole. They had a problem on pit road this last time. Started, restarted 12th. He's driven up to six. Remember the start of the race? He had to start in the back. So they just keep having to go to the back and clawing themselves back toward the front, Marty. And, Jeff, it's really a product of the fact that they did not pass inspection last night. This team left the racetrack after 10 p.m. They finally passed inspection at 9.51. So those guys, along with Jimmy Johnson, Chris Buescher, and Denny Hamlin, all had their pit stalls given to them by NASCAR. They didn't get a chance to select them. So they're mixed in with the 42 and all these guys. And every time down pit road, Truex is unhappy because they seem to get blocked in. They seem to lose spots. So it's a constant battle. And it sort of penalized the 42 as well. They're all kind of losing spots every time they come down pit road just by being around cars that they're running around on the racetrack. The gap between Harvick and Kyle Busch, 3.2 seconds. It's the Overton's 400 as we go NASCAR nonstop.
69 laps to go in the Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Chicagoland Speedway. This telecast presented by Steel. Harvick still out front, 3.4 seconds in front of Kyle Busch. Larson running third. Martin Truex Jr. up to fourth. Joey Logano is fifth. Well, that's what Kevin Harvick wants, right? This is where he's so good. Those left side tires right on the white line. He does this at Atlanta. He does this so many places where he just parts of the racetrack. Here he's in the top, but in three and four, he's just digging on the bottom, Dale. And that's, I think, his strength. I think that's where he's his best. Yeah, he. I knew he was probably going to get a big lead here, but I'm watching Kyle Busch in second place, watching the lap times. Kyle was actually faster than Harvick the last lap. They've been kind of swapping speed uh, back and forth every lap. So if we do get an opportunity to bunch the field back up, Kyle, Kyle Busch has moved into the picture here, as well as Larson back in third, also has amazing speed. Dale Jr., the big three. We've talked about them all weekend. Why did we talk about them? Look at this. This is the big three coming into this race right here. Most wins this season. The numbers are out. Unbelievable. Five for Harvick, four, three for Truex Jr. Top fives, double digits for all of these guys. Every track you go to, they're exceptionally fast, especially the one-and-a-half-mile tracks. How about the laps led? They dominate all categories, fourth, second, and fourth. And, oh, by the way, playoff points? They are killing everybody in playoff points. We saw Kevin Harvick score another chunk with that stage win. This was coming into that race. And, oh, by the way, now they're first, second, and fourth. They seem to always end up there. There's a reason they're called the big three this season. And when you look out the windshield or off the top of the car here of the four as it comes back to the grandstand side, you can see blue skies, but you can also see what looks like rain. So that's why these crew chiefs continue to look out over the grandstand and look off to the west to see how soon will this potential weather get to the racetrack? Will it get here before the end of the race? And will it get here before they have to come to pit road again? Because, Steve, they can't still make it to the checkered flag, can they, with the amount of fuel they have? No, they can't. They're absolutely going to have to pit. And remember, we've seen this play out once already this year. Rain really came into play at Michigan, right? Well, that's where Clint Boyer decided, I'm going to get a little track position, race to the rain. Who did he beat? The leader, the four of Kevin Harvick. Just what you're talking about at Michigan. Kevin Harvick. To pit road. There's the decision right there. You see Clint Boyer takes two tires. That lets him start. But then he closes it on the racetrack with two tires. Look at this move right here. Dale clears the four and was able to just run enough laps until the rain came. There it is. Second win for Clint. Second win of the season for Clint Boyer, but now it's all Kevin Harvick. Harvick out front, still has that three-second lead over Kyle Busch. And you just see Kevin Harvick, he's got a three-second lead. He's not just riding around. He was sideways in the middle of one and two. It's the only way he can go fast. Isn't that right, Junior? You cannot just ride around. You've got to push your car to the limit. You may get another pit stop. You've got to find out where your weaknesses are, how the track has changed, and keep communicating that to your team in case you do get a pit stop. Well, if he knows who's behind him, you know Kyle Busch is in second place, and Larson, who I see is running the boards again, you know three seconds ain't a big enough lead. And these guys, like I said, are running laps just slightly quicker than Harvick. That last time by, Harvick had a little trouble with traffic. Kyle Busch was three-tenths quicker and chopped that lead down to 2.8 seconds. So at this point, are you wanting that interval? I mean, I would always normally give it to you if we had the lead, try to manage I mean, it. And, but you would come over at times, I don't need any more. I know what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, I, everybody's different, but I wouldn't want that information lap after lap get annoying after a few laps to hear, unless I'm just driving away. I mean, by all <laughs> means, tell me that I'm driving away from him. But if it's, if I'm losing time, just try to allow me to, uh, maybe tell me why I'm losing time. Where right. they're running? Are they are they running a line that I'm not? That might be costing me some time. Have they moved up? Because I know Harvick, Harvick can't see them in the rearview mirror, so he needs that information that the 42 car has found a lot of speed running on the top of both ends. Give me that information there. And usually I get that from my spotter, PJ Majors, or maybe you guys talk a little bit about that and share that information on a different channel and then relay it to me. Exactly. Exactly. I believe also. I believe for Kevin Harvick. I don't think he can trust his pit crew, Steve. I think that 
you're looking at potential green flag pit stops. Although here we go. Here's Corey the LaJoy got into the wall and slow on the racetrack. That brings the caution out. So now it will come into the hands of the pit crew. And will we see something crazy like what we saw out of Clint Boyer? Two tire stop. No tires. So something Rick, anticipating right side, tires, precipitation. Look hey, Rick, this is pretty interesting right here. So we had a couple teams that had to stay out here. We're going to take a little look at what happened to the 72 of Corey LaJoy. It's already in the fence there. Don't really know whether they had a right front tire obviously going down before that or maybe just got into the wall trying to run that high side. Got a little. It's it's late in the race. Time. Yeah. I mean, if he didn't have a flat tire, it looked like it was flat. But it's late in the race, it's hot. Running that high line, you're going to make a little mistake here and there. So two drivers, I was going to say on the last pit stops, remember Eric Amarola stayed out because he had you. Kelly reported they only had one set left. He's done a nice job. He's in 11th. You see off in the distance, it looks like rain and clouds are coming. Yeah. The two of Brad Kozlowski, they stayed out to save a set of tires. The rain might actually hurt them. They yeah. have a better, more tires in the entire field. He's in six. So now the question is, 27 laps though, Rick. I think two tires is a big, big gamble. But it paid off for Clint Boyer in Michigan. Will anybody take that gamble here today? It was already raining north of the racetrack. That was the what we're seeing up north. But again, the front moving in from the west. How long will it stay away? Will it stay away for 59 laps? That's what the fans want. That's what these teams want. Kelly. Kevin Harvick in that four car from the lead will come to pit road. He told crew chief Rodney Childers that he needs to be tightened up just a little bit getting into a corner and getting out of a corner, getting to give him four Goodyear sticker tires and Sunoco fuel. The 18 of Kyle Busch, well, he's happier now. He says she's rolling pretty good right now. You really helped my balance. He's going to get four tires and fuel, some water and Gatorade, Marty. Kyle Larson said he was too tight at the short run, but he wanted to be freed up a little bit at the beginning of the run, but it was pretty good at the end of the run. He wanted two water bottles, one to drink and one to dump on him. Kyle Larson leaving with four fresh Goodyear tires. Applaud the pit crew. The 18 team, a better stop than the four team. Kyle Busch will have his choice of lanes when they come back to the restart. Well, you wonder what the billing has been for Dale Jr. and racing and calling races here on NBC. We get to do it again next Saturday night. Daytona <laughs> Jr. What do you think? Well, that'll be fun, man. We're going to a racetrack where I've had a lot of success. 
And I, I love talking racing, and we're going to talk about some of my favorite type of racing, plate racing and drafting and all that. So get to explain some of the fans at home how that all works. Well, I can't wait because I have watched races with you, and you've kind of blown my mind on what those guys are trying to position. Now you're going to let all those secrets out to everybody? We'll see if I can do it. I well, mean, I don't need to keep them anymore. So. <laughs> you're done with them. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> there you go, the behind-the-scenes secrets. Yeah, right. He's going <laughs> to give away all the secrets of why he was such a great plate racer. Well, guys, let's go back to Chicago land here just for a minute. We got some big restarts coming up, and look what's happened on these restarts in the past. So, Martin Truex Jr., we showed this a little bit ago. This is an art. You've got to push. He pushes Kurt Busch. Great job. Gets right to his bumper and actually moves him in front of Kevin Harvick. We're going to see a lot of pushing on these restarts because of the advantage it gives you. Now, Joey Logano. He's got Eric Amarola on a little bit older tire. Push, push, and now he hangs a left. Tries to make it three wide in an effort to get position. These are things that we're getting ready to see, Junior. We're going to see some extremely aggressive restarts because now it's getting time to drop the checkered flag and somebody's going to take that trophy home and you can earn it right now. Yeah, we've been seeing them guys fan out, get three, four wide further back in the third, fourth, fifth rows. Now I think we're going to see these guys starting to get more aggressive in that front two rows. Front two rows made up of Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson, and Martin Truex Jr. And Kyle Busch had been here all day. He has not had a restart all day in the front. Is that going to hurt him? Is that inexperience of what he's been doing? What, you know, what he hadn't had a chance to do, is that going to hurt him right here? What was it doing again? Plowing, 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 plowing. We'll see how well it does. He has chosen the outside line. Harvick on the inside line. 55 laps to go. Kyle Busch gets a, he's already a car length ahead by the time they get to the flag stand. Logano dove all the way down to the apron trying to take positions away. They didn't have a good pit stop, so he'll try to make up some of that ground. Look at Drew actually Keselowski on the outside. Will make it tough on Harvick down here. Harvick trying to clear Truex. Truex on the outside, trying to take that spot away. That inside line just prevailed. And Kyle Busch trying to check out. They can get to the end now with fuel, right, Steve? Yep, fuel's not an issue. They go all the way to the end on fuel, Rick. And they definitely, a lot of teams don't have any more tires. No more new sets of tires. Yeah, we got a report by Marty Snyder. The only teams I'm aware of that still have a set of tires left are the 31 and the 2. So if there is another yellow, Rick, that could come into play. One other guy that we know now has a set of tires also is the 17. He's in 14th position of Stenhouse Jr. He also has a set. Eric Jones able to get by. Chase Elliott, he drops back just a bit. Logano trying to get by the 20. He will clear him and get into that fifth position. So really, I mean, if this race, it's 53 to go. If it goes, you know, 20 laps here, and we get a caution, those guys with that set of tires, it's, they're going to win the race. Oh, yeah, it's game over at that point. Well, you say that, but there's a lot of cars on the lead lap. Yeah, but I Jeff, mean, I think they're all going to pit for cool tires. I think they're all going to come for cool tires. That's interesting. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. You think they got oh, tires? Oh, right here. Almirola take them three wide. Almirola all the way to the grass, trying to get by Clint Boyer and Chase Elliott. He's going to make it as they go into one. Remember how good of a day it's been for Almirola. He's led more laps today than he has in the prior three seasons. He's looking to get back to the front with 52 to go. Almarola up to eight. Kyle Bush has a four second or four tenth of a second lead over Kevin Harvick. And Marty, the two of Brad Keslowski currently running fourth. And Rick, you never know when a race might be won. Paul Wolf made the call to not pit when everyone else pitted at lap 178. So that means they have one extra set of tires versus the rest of the field. But is there a problem on the two cars? Kyle Larson tries to pass him. Take a listen on the radio. Uh, have I got a loose wheel here? I'll just see what I can get. Big time, a loose rear wheel. It's not uh, undrivable yet. Not undrivable yet. Junior, walk me through that. You know you've got a loose wheel. You're trying to hang on to it because you know how you have an advantage on the rest of the field if this thing runs green and we get another caution. There's a lot of things to think about there. If he has to come down pit road to fix the loose wheel, there goes that advantage. There goes that set of tires on the car that, that would help him win the race should we get a caution here in 10 or 20 laps. But 
it's 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 very scary to to be out there on a wheel that could fly off your race car. That's I mean that's that's what that's what the potential is. And Brad knows that he has to decide that he he can't get information from the crew or they're not going to tell him. They don't feel it. They don't know how bad it is. His crew chief's not going to bail him out and say, "Come on down, buddy." If you you know we're just going to go ahead and do it. You got to be the one to make that decision whether the wheel's about to come off. How long can you go? And it's tough. I mean, it's it's just a really, especially this late in a race, he's just 49 to go. And he knows the advantage he has in that set of tires back in the pit that's going to help him win this race should they get a later call. He knows that situation, so that makes it even harder to have to come down pit road. Basically, he doesn't want pit. <laughs> <laughs> well, back up front, we see Kyle Busch is still leading, leading the first laps he's had all day. And Kevin Harvick is trying to do something different. Now, Kyle Busch has been a little bit quicker than Kevin. So Kevin's got to try something different. So we've seen him running a different line in one and two, just like all day long. You know, when somebody gets out front, you're going to have to try something different. Right here, you're in a bad spot. Aerodynamically, the wind's coming off your car. Your car's not got the downforce. So you've got to try something different. Right now, he's gone back to the bottom. Can he run Kyle Busch down? He's had the best car most of the day, but now that Kyle Busch has clean air, Kyle has the best car. Kelly. Oh, man, we could have problems again for the 10 of Al Almirola. He reported a loose wheel yet again before it was a left rear. They had come loose, so they called him down to pit road to give him uh, four new tires. These are going to be scuff tires uh, to see if that fixes the problem. But, man, for a driver who was leading this race, he's had to come to pit road two extra times to fix the loose wheel. Well, uh, Kelly, it doesn't do any good at this point, but you have to ask yourself, did the original loose wheel damage something that has now caused a second loose wheel? In the end, it doesn't, you know, it's self-inflicted. This is, these are the types of things the 10 can't do when you want to outrun somebody like Kyle Busch in the 18. You just have to have a clean race. We talked about how the heat might affect these drivers mentally. Well, what about the crews? Is that why we're seeing potentially some loose wheels where maybe the crew's not hitting all five lug nuts because of the temperature and what it's been doing to them? You know, Rick, it's impossible to say why. We haven't seen a lot of loose wheels lately. We have rash of them today, but without a doubt, you are absolutely right. Just like Chase Elliott, Daniel Suarez, and some of the drivers, most of these picker guys work both the Xfinity race and the cup race. They are in those same fire suits. They're sitting down on pit road in over a hundred degree heat index. Very easy to lose focus, get dehydrated, and not be at your best. Kyle Busch in front of Harvick and Truex Jr. The big three, the top three right now at Chicago as we go NASCAR nonstop.
You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Chicago Land Speedway. This telecast presented by Steel. You didn't miss anything here. This great battle for the lead. Kyle Busch out in front of Kevin Harvick. Harvick searching around the racetrack, trying to find grip, trying to find a little extra speed, and it's working. Now he's all the way to the back bumper of Kyle Busch. He's gone to the top, the very top in the middle of both corners, and it's just helped his exit speed so much. Watch right here as he goes down the front straightaway how much ground he gains on the 18 car. Watch the two of the best in the sport duke it out right here for this lead. Kyle's going to change his line right here. Look what, and then Harvick's going to change his line. Harvick sees that and kind of prepares for that. He knows as he's getting closer to Kyle that Kyle's watching and Kyle's going to change his line. So he's prepared to make an adjustment on entry if he needs to, and he did just there. All right, Junior, what's the best place for the 18 to put his car? Does he want to be right in front of the four every time they enter the corner? Well, I think that he sees the speed the four is making up top. That, you know, he wants to go to the top. I thought Kyle made a lot of great speed over the last run against the, against the fence. So he knows, and I know, that he can get up there. And there he goes. He's right against the wall. He's got to, he's got to find speed up there. And just like we've seen in the past with Eric Amarola and other drivers, they're gonna, he's going to end this battle right here, man because he's going to find speed up high. He probably, I didn't think he'd run the, the, the middle there because the bottom has been so dominant in three and four. And you can see Carvick makes a lot of ground running the bottom there. So he may end up, Kyle may end up going back to the bottom in three and four after this lap. But one and two, there's a lot of speed for Kyle up against the wall. He knows that. Let's listen into the 18 radio. He found some speed one and two now. Entering between second and third seam, sliding across and straddling and leaving. All right, this is a tough situation for Kyle. He got he had to come up underneath a black car on corner exit there, didn't get to use the throttle. You see Harvick running the high side, gained a lot of ground there. Getting through these lap cars, really critical. Another lap car coming up. Kyle gets to use the throttle, open up the wheel off the corner. Only 36 laps to go. Now 35, and the sun peeking back out. So hopefully the weather is not going to be an issue for the end of this race. And right now, a great battle continuing between Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch. I think what Kyle did a really good job of right there, he saw Kevin Harvick loose off the corner, was as soon as he got to the top lane, he went fast. He didn't have to learn how to do it. I think that's extremely impressive. Junior, it's so hard to change your lane and just all of a sudden find speed, but that's what he was able to do. Well, they've been working at it all day long. It's really hard to do that at the start of the race in the first 40 to 50, 100 laps. They've been working all day long on that high side and got it learned. They learned it pretty well. Look at the speeds of the line. Kyle Busch, the fastest. But see who's coming as we watch this battle. Truex, Larson. Larson is coming. Boyer is coming. If these guys continue to race, we're going to have bigger than a two-car battle. Coming to three, 33 laps to go. Harvick trying that high side in three and four. He sees that now Kyle's adjusted his line and Kyle's driving away. Well, I got to find something new. So what I have isn't enough anymore. So he's trying that high side three and four. He's, de he's determined to make it work. So how much are you seeing? How much is Kevin Harvick getting from his spotter? Or Kyle Busch getting from his spotter? I would assume they're getting a lot of information. Or you just never know. Sometimes, you know, these guys have been working with their crews for a long time, their spotters for a long time. So they have, they know what each one needs and wants. Kelly. Well, I've been listening to the radio for both the 18 and the four, and I can tell you, Kyle Busch in that 18 is getting a lot of the information that you guys are giving all of us, talking about exactly where the four cars running his lines, when he's making up time, when he's losing ground to the 18. On the other hand, when I switch over to the four radio for Kevin Harvick, it's mostly quiet, just very little input from his sputter. Well, Kelly, the reason why is because Harvick can see it. Right, Harvick can see if he's making ground or not. He also can look at his digital dash and see how fast he's running as far as the lap time, but he knows what Kyle Busch is doing. Kyle just doesn't know what Harvick is doing because he just can't pay attention to the mirror during, through the corner. Kyle had to go to the bottom there for a lap car. Kyle probably would have rather ran the top, but had to go to the bottom there. It's going to give up a little bit of time to Harvick who ran the top, but. Kyle's found some speed. Start. He had, they're working around, but behind these two right here, I had mentioned the 78 of Martin Truex Jr. and the 42 of Larson. Well, Dale, you talk about running the top. You say Larson's the best at it. He's proving it here. Truex stuck at the bottom, 42 running the top. Look at the momentum the 42 will have down the front stretch. Marty. 
been a day of making up ground for Kyle Larson, also Martin Truex Jr., but Larson trying to use that high line. And we talk about the big three. I asked Larson, I said, how close are you guys in the 42 team to catching the big three? He said, I think we're really close, but what a statement it would be if he could get his first ever mile and a half win. That would be huge, and maybe we would have to say the big four instead of the big three. But Kyle Larson coming here late in the race, does he have enough time in 30 laps to catch those lead cars? Right there, Kyle Larson was a tenth faster than the leaders. Making a pass on the 78 on this lap. Gave up a little bit of time there. But it's still faster than the leaders. Yeah, it's three and a half seconds now. Larson is back. Does he have enough time with 29 laps to go? NASCAR nonstop. It has been very hot in this Monster Energy Cup Series race from Chicagoland Speedway. You see the temperature there, over 152 degrees inside the car. It has been a long time that they've been in these cars at that temperature. Make sure to stay with us after the race. 5.30 post-race, victory lap at 6, and the Dale Jr. download with Denny Hamlin at 7. They may talk about the Denny face, and I wonder what face Denny will make right now running inside the top 10. So the question is, does Kyle Larson have enough time? He has been running the fastest laps consistently over the past handful or more laps, faster than Kyle Busch, faster than Kevin Harvick. He's 2.4 seconds back, 23 laps to go in this race. Well, it went from a question to a heated discussion over in this booth. Dale Jr. didn't agree with me. I think Kyle Larson has the car. I think he's the best at running the top. I think he can run the closest without getting into the fence, and he is taking time off the lead every lap. He is. He's gained a second over the last six laps, but he's got to he's got to <laughs> pass Harvick. That's got to be costly and take some time. And his advantage, I believe, is going to get smaller and smaller. Like how much faster he's running than Kyle is going to get smaller and smaller as we get closer and closer to the end. The other thing too is that Kyle isn't running. Kyle Busch isn't running where Larson's running. Once Kyle Busch gets more information about Larson, Kyle's going to find Man, some more speed. Did you forget Bush who won is yesterday? Find some more speed. I just who won yesterday? 
Kyle Larson. Yeah, that's right. I'm telling my but only he's question running, is. I know, but he, and he's, he's running the top, and he's catching Harvick. But Harvick can run that line as well. Yeah, but not down here in three and four. And this is the difference. Down here, Harvick goes to the bottom. Larson to the top. This is the end of the racetrack that gives Kyle Larson hope. Look at the clean iron on the nose. Look at the momentum he has. This is where Kyle Larson is going to go by him next lap. That's right. Kyle Larson is the only one that can make the top work in three and four. Think about the fitness, the fluids, the heat, what he's trying to do this weekend. Look here, look here. Kyle, Kyle Larson went to the top. Harvick went to the bottom to go around a lap car. This is where he's going to lose this position. Harvick's going to come up and give him the lane because he knows that it's over. And that's huge right there. There's no battle from Harvick, so there's really no resistance. Now the pathway to Kyle Busch is clean. I thought with you, Junior, I thought there would be a tougher time getting by Harvick, but that was easy with that lap car. That made it easy. So now Kyle Larson can see Kyle Busch. Man, here he comes. Hey, we asked, who can disrupt the big three? Kyle Larson is trying to be the guy. First place, Kyle Busch. Third, Kevin Harvick. Fourth, Ryan Tru uh, excuse me. Martin Truex Jr., the three of those have won the last 11 mile and a half. While all that was going on, Kyle Larson's gained almost another second. That's, that's it. I mean, he's coming fast. 1.6 seconds, the gap now between Look. Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson. Kyle Busch is starting to think about changing his line in three and four. He's been running the bottom. Let's see, let's see what Kyle Busch does with his line. And how he he's already starting to think about trying to defend and learn. He's got to learn before Kyle Larson gets there. He's got to find the speed before Kyle gets there. You mean because he can't go there one lap ahead. He needs a couple laps to figure the top he out. He better find it now, and he knows that. So let's see what he does down here in three and four. Well, let's listen into the 18. Yeah, Lawrence is P2 now. Wall, both in. He's running 30s here. You're running 50s. Oh, he can't like to hear that, Dale. Yep. He's beating you. He's on the wall, and he's two tenths fast. And he ran the bottom there, which is interesting. He ran the middle the lap before, so he must have not liked it. But he's not committed himself to the fence. So I wonder what he thinks about running the fence down in three and four, and if he'll give it a shot. The other thing too, Larson's running the wall. I mean, he's, he's as close as you can get to it right there. Can he stay off of the wall? That's the that's a great question because he knows he might have to pick up a little more speed to catch Kyle. And if he does and tries to run harder, will can he stay off the wall? We've seen this with Kyle Larson. We've seen him late in the race try to step it up a little bit and get into the wall, damage his car. Now we're down 17 to go, 16 to go. I mean, he can see him. He's right there, but that's the difference. See how Kyle Busch enters the corner? He doesn't enter as high as Kyle Larson does. You've talked about it all day, Junior. You've got to get that, push that exit as close to the wall as you can. The exit of the straightaway into the corner. Kyle Busch has not done that all day, and Kyle Larson has consistently done it. Yeah, you got to pick. It's time to commit now. Larson is a second back. He's chopped, chopped it down to a second. He's never won a mile and a half track. He's finished second six times. So he's sick of that. That's unbelievable. With a guy that's that good at the top, you would have thought he would have broken through at yeah. some point. You beat him by just over a tenth of a second right I, there. If you do the math, he's going to get there. I, the big question is when he gets closer to him and it, Kyle Busch moves up, does it take the air off of Kyle Larson and hurt his advance? That advantage, his advantage of speed over Kyle Busch is going to get smaller as he gets closer to him. But it's the same issue. I still think three and four is the key. They both run the top in one and two, but Junior, three and four, Kyle Busch is going to have to decide, can he stay on the bottom of the racetrack or does he have to defend up top? Hey, guys, I, hey guys. yesterday we saw in the Xfinity race, he ran all the way up top to get the lead and then dove down to the bottom and won the race. So we saw him run both the bottom and the top yesterday. Does he have the bottom as an option if he gets up to the 18 and the 18 takes that high line away? I don't know if he, he can. I don't know if he can beat the 18 on the bottom. I mean, 18's going to have, 18's leading the race. He's a fast car. You look, Kyle right there, Kyle Busch, he ran the top of three and four. Kyle Busch is going to try to commit to the top of three and four. Let's see what he does the next lap. Did he like what he felt up there in three and four? Is he going to continue to go there? That was a little slower. He actually lost almost two tenths to Kyle Larson that lap. He, he had was, been losing about a tenth a lap. He was slower, but does that actually hurt? Kyle Larson, though, right? Uh, yeah. That's the thing. And so you see what? what happened? That's right. Kyle Larson goes to the bottom because he saw it coming. He's going to take the air off my car. i got to do something different. So even though it hurt Kyle Busch, it hurt Kyle Larson also. Yeah. Oh, I mean, those are the games that are getting played out there. And, and Rick, he, you talked about it. He was faster there. It's five-tenths of a second now. Rick, you talked about it. Larson, would he go to the bottom? If he has to go to the bottom, he will. He just showed you right there in three and four. 
I don't know if he can win the race down there. I don't know if he can make a pass for the lead running the bottom. Well, traffic, guys, out in front of Kyle Busch. I see six or seven lap cars, slower cars, that Kyle Busch is going to catch. Now we see the 42 back up against the wall. That's what, I mean, when, when Kyle Larson sees the 18 go to the bottom, big smile on his face. You he heard knows. that information right there. What did the crew chief say? He likes the bottom of three and four, top one of two. Marty. And Kyle Larson has asked for help with those lap cars. He told the spotter, he said, clear the top for me, clear the top. They got in the way one time, and he had to dive to the bottom. So those lap cars could be a factor, guys. Oh, well, they will. There's a lot of them in front of these guys. They're going to have to navigate that. And I think that that could play a huge role. I think it will play a role in who wins this race, who gets through the lap cars the best. Coming up on 10 laps to go. These two have finished one, two, seven times between Cup and Xfinity Series races. The guy who's always finished out front has been Kyle Busch. Could that change today? Kyle Larson chasing down that 18. Good run right there off turn two. You see the gap getting smaller. It's going it, to, well, with the 10 to go, it's hard to get your your mind in, hey, I don't have to get it all in one lap. You know, you got to, you can't push too hard and make a mistake if you're Kyle Larson. But that lap traffic, that really hurt Kyle Busch right there. Big time. This shows you how good Kyle Busch is. He just went by Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott's average finish at this racetrack before today, 2.5. Here comes the 42. He's moving to the middle of the racetrack now. He's forced to go there because yep. of the lap cars. Yep. The advantage, the 18 lost in three Everybody and four. Five. He gained it back. Yeah, it actually may have hurt Larson more than it hurt Bush. Bush back to the bottom of the racetrack. Larson, his oh. comfort zone up against the wall. Look at the momentum he has coming off the wall. Big run right there. That was solid throttle in the center of the corner by the 42, man. He is digging up there. It's a slick racetrack. We can't, we can't, we can't express that enough. Oh, he's going to the bottom here. Bottom. Too. How about that, Junior? Went to the bottom. <laughs> okay, uh, it surprised me. <laughs> Because, you know, because Kyle Busch has been running the top of one and two, but he's entering about a car length lower, so there's still some good air on the outside of that 18, between the 18 and the ball, entering the corner for Larson. Larson must just feel like he doesn't have it. Oh, he got into the, the wall. wall. He did. The 42 got up into the wall, barely brushed it, but that slowed him down enough with seven laps to go. All right. The gap, still right. a just second. I got the right rear pretty bad. As a crew chief and a, and a spotter, you, I want to hear that. If I'm Kyle Busch, I want to hear that the 42 just brushed the wall. So that can calm me down a little bit, and I don't make a mistake. See right here, he's just trying to run that wall. and just, just oversteps it just a touch. Gets into the wall a little bit. Obviously had to be out of the throttle while he was in the wall. Didn't give up a ton of time with that, but with only six laps to go, it may be enough. Kelly. And Kyle Busch's spotter did relay that information to Kyle immediately, said the 42 just wiped the right side of the car off. So Kyle has that information. Yeah, that, that's going to calm me down. I don't want to – Kyle, he's on – he's racing 10 tenths, man, and you got to. But if I get that information, it gives me a little confidence that the guy's back there making mistakes and running as hard as he can. I think Kyle Larson's move to the bottom in one and two, the lap before he actually got into the wall, was the signal that he didn't think he was catching him fast enough. He had to try something different. So not only did he try to do something in one and two by running the bottom, he tried to do something different in three and four also, tried to carry a little more speed, just crossed the bounds and got in the wall. And five to go, he just trucked two, two tenths off his, off, he was two tenths faster right there. So this race ain't over yet, but laps are running out. He's got to hope this lap traffic holds Absolutely. Kyle Busch up a little bit. Absolutely. Kyle Busch, four wins on the season already. Three of those were oh, consecutive. Oh and again, right now. It's Newman, man. Yeah, Newman. Newman doesn't want to get past. I mean, Kyle Busch is mad. That, that right there <laughs> has set Kyle Busch over the edge. That Newman raced him off the corner and cost him the ability to get back into the throttle off of turn four. Here comes Newman again, right onto the back bumper of that 18. Expect the guys to give you a little bit more leeway when you're racing for a win. But Newman is Newman. That's what we expect. He's going to race you no matter what. Well, now these two cars. Wide. Yeah, there he goes, Steve. That's the worst thing he wants to see. And that one of them is his brother. I wonder what Kurt's going to do here. Wonder what Kyle's going to do. What lines are going to run? He's running behind these guys. He's this stuck could cost behind him. them. Oh yeah, this could cost him a ton of. Oh look at contact oh. there. This could cost him a ton of time. 
The 18 to the inside. Here comes Newman again. Here comes Larson. Will this outer lane Little contact stay clear? there again. The 18 slides up the racetrack. The 17 right in front of the 42. Now the 17 hindering the 42's progress. Three laps to go. Now down to two. This is crazy. Larson again trying to get up to the wall. Kyle Busch to the bottom here. What kind of run does Kyle Larson get off of this corner? Kurt Busch right up in front of the 42. Now he moves out of the way. Nobody in between the 18 and 42. Kyle Busch again to the bottom. Another opportunity for Larson to get some, get a huge run. Coming up on one lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. And there's the gap between one and two. Kyle Busch, and here comes Larson. Larson to the bottom of the track. Slide job. Trying to take the lead away. Slide job. Almost. The momentum, the contact. 18, they make contact. The 18 into the wall. Right, right. Back They're back side, side by side again, going into three for the lead. Larson has the advantage. Here comes the 18, he puts the oh bumper to the back goodness. of him. The 18 into the wall, yeah, the 42 yeah, sideways. Around, Where's Harvick? Here comes the 18. Kyle Busch will win. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. Oh my man, what a race. What a great race. That's what it means to win in the Monster Energy Cup Series. Never give up, guys, never give up. Look at the thumbs up, though. Look at the thumbs up. Respect, yes. That's good racing. Kyle put that big slide job on Kyle Bush. And Jeff, he has to know that opened the door, right? That's, That's where right. the thumbs up came from. That's right. The move he made on the 18 off two, the 18 retaliated in three and four. That's hard racing. I'd love to see that harder racing and a thumbs up from the guy who didn't go to victory lane. Absolutely. Kyle Busch wins in the Monster Energy Cup Series for the fifth time this year. <laughs> Look at the right front tire is going to come off. The crowd went wild on the last lap. We went wild. Can he even do a burnout? The right front tire is not even on the car. He parks it right on the start finish line. Kyle Busch. What an incredible performance this moment presented by Sunoco. Fueling victories all season long. The signature bow to the crowd after he grabs the checkered flag. Kyle Busch, 48 career wins, and what a career it is already. The 2015 Cup Series champion. <laughs> Let's go to Rutledge Wood. Kyle Busch hopping out of the car, grabbing that checkered flag. Kyle, that was a crazy race to the finish. You and Kyle Larson, he gave you a thumbs up as everything's going on. Man, how did that shake down there for you two? I don't know, just uh, I got really boxed in behind lap cars and, uh, and got really slow. And then was just trying to get all I could there uh, the last couple laps. And Larson tried to pull a slider, didn't quite complete it. Slid up into me, used me. And then um, I kind of used him as a little bit of a break getting into three. and. Um, was able to come back for the victory, you know? So uh, great great thing for this Skittles. Camry, all these guys, I mean, we were horrible today. Absolutely horrendous, and uh, we just never gave up. We just always kept working on it, kept making the most of it, and got to where we needed it right there at the end, and uh, was able to lead all those laps, and if it wasn't for lap traffic, it wouldn't even have been a race. So I don't know what y'all are whining about, but if you don't like that kind of racing, don't even watch. Man, racing all the way to the end. Kyle, we know how cold it is here. You kept saying plowing, plowing, plowing. Your team made the change. You got back up front. 
Did you see Harvick when when you guys started beating in banging just then? Did you think you could still make it to the finish line first? I had no clue where third place was. Uh, I just thought it was a race between Larson and I. And you know, when uh, when you start bang, banging doors on one another, that's what it turns the race into, and it's fair game after that. So. Um, you know, if he would have raced fair game off of two and, and not banged doors, then we would have been just fine in a turn three. But um, that's the way it goes sometimes. And um, proud to get ourselves a, another win here at Chicagoland. It's been a long time and um, pretty cool going to Victory Lane. Ten years, he comes back to Victory Lane, Marty. That's Kyle Busch. Rut, what incredible racing it was between Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson. And then Kyle Larson, after the race, what was his quote? That was fun. So I know you might be upset, but, hey, you said it was fun. What was the best part about that? I oh, mean, I'm not upset. Uh, I had an opportunity there to to slide in front of him, and I, I figured I didn't, wouldn't clear him, or or I would allow him to drive back underneath me. So uh, I tried to get to his door, and and you know I, I opened the door for him to retaliate into three. So I thought it was free game. You know, I ran into him first. He got me after that. Maybe a little bit worse than I got him, but uh, you know that's that's all right. I love racing Kyle. I know all you fans are probably mad at him, but. Uh, hey, we put on a hell of a show for you guys, and uh, that was that was a blast. I had the top roll in there. I ran the right front off of it a little bit, you know, trying to run those guys down. And uh, <laughs> I mean, that's got to be one of the best NASCAR finishes of all time. I know I, I, I'm on the short end of the stick again, but uh, you know, it was it was fun. So uh, our Credit One Bank Chevy was amazing. Um, not not great on the short runs, but man, on the the long runs, I could really get the top going. Was able to get the top of three and four figured out and really make up some time there. Um, it was just a lot of fun. My, my team did a great job. Pit crew was on it again, so thanks to them. Uh, thank all you fans for coming out. It was a hot weekend, uh, really hot, but uh, glad we put on a good show for you. The fans can hear you. They were booing when Kyle came out of the car. You want to say anything to them? <laughs> no, I mean, I, like I said, I just want to thank all you guys for being fans of the sport, fans for all of us drivers. Um, we really appreciate it, and uh, man, that was just a that was a fun race. You know, it was we we both got our elbows up there. We ran into each other a couple times, and and uh, he came out the winner. So um, you know, I think if roles were reversed, I would have done the same thing. If if he got into me off two, so uh, I, I probably would have ran into him into three. So um, can't can't fault him for that. You know, that was just hard racing. And just to clarify, Rick, what he said was, when I ran into Kyle Busch, it was open door for him to run back into me and in one of the greatest finishes in NASCAR history. That was awesome. Absolutely wow. incredible battle. All the way to the checkered flag. Look at these cars. Look at the right side of that car. That happened because there was the contact from the 42 when he tried to do the slide job. Didn't completely clear him. And so the right side gets banged up. Here was the traffic that the 18 was in that we heard Kyle Busch talking about. Yeah, he just got held up. He had a pretty good amount of space to, to you know, in, behind Larson, but they just were racing hard here, and it just held him up big time. See Ryan Newman making it three wide on the bottom. Yeah, Kyle couldn't get back to the gas off of turn two, and it cost him a ton of time. Then there's some contact right here with the 17 and Stenhouse. It cost Kyle another little, a little bit more time there. You see Kyle Larson peeking on the outside right there. Here he comes with that outside lane. And then, you know, we talk about the slide job all the time. Well, this is Kyle Larson just overdriving the entry, carrying too much speed, trying to get in front of the 18. Just doesn't give him enough room. Contact right there. I think, you know, Larson could have been a whole lot more aggressive right there and, and ran into, you know, Kyle Busch and made that situation a lot worse. He tried to give him enough room. They did make contact. I think it was really that intentional. I mean, Larson doesn't know where Kyle Busch is at. But all this right here is fair game. I mean, they, if you're going to bang doors, be ready. It's like Kyle Busch said. It's like Kyle Larson said. This is an amazing save right here. I'm yes, up the downshift to third year, Jeff Burton, <laughs> thinking I might be racing back to the line. He reaches over he, and grabs third. He wants to get that seventh, second That's place right. finish in a row with a mile and a half. I, listen, Kyle Larson said it best. He said, I got, you know, I tried to slide job. It didn't work. I got into him, and then that was fair game. I mean, that's what that was. Two drivers, elbows up, digging, trying to make something happen. If you're this man right here, you just got run into, coming to the checkered, well, then you can run into the guy that ran into you if you can. <laughs> Let's hear from him. He's down there in victory lane, a makeshift victory lane, and Kelly. And, of course, the first priority there, the family, wife Samantha, son Brexton. The Skittles were flying, the NOS Energy drink flying there. Kyle, first you had to go toe-to-toe to -toe -to -toe with 
Kevin Harvick, and then it was Kyle Larson. And the way that thing played out, is that what this sport is all about? Yeah, it is. I mean, um, tried to pull a slide job and uh, didn't quite get it all the way. I don't know if he would have, he wasn't close enough to get it all the way. But uh, when he got into us there, it got me into the wall and just killed my right side, and it was on after that. You know, it's just a race on back, who can get back to the checker flag first. And fortunately, we had just enough in the Skittles America Mix Camry to get back to victory lane. This Toyota Camry was uh, horrible today, and uh, we made the most of it. Uh, Adam Stevens and all my guys, they did a phenomenal job of the race adjustments and adjustments throughout the entire race to get us where we needed to be there at the end. And, Got us. Uh, we got some clean air finally. My picker did a great job helping me there, and uh, it was a way different race car out front. So, um, again, thank uh, Interstate Batteries, Nost Energy Drink, Cessna, Ream, Stanley, uh, DVX Eyewear, Black Clover, and of course the fans, uh, my fans. They're pretty passionate. They're pretty powerful for what we got going on with Rowdy Nation. The rest of them, I don't know what they're booing about. That was a hell of a race. So, you got problems if you don't like that. All right, from a race car that was horrible to one that made it to victory lane, that has the makings of a championship caliber team, Rick. Absolutely, Kelly. And when he won the championship, he won five races. This was win number five already in 2018. Early on, it was Eric Almarola. Then it was Kevin Harvick, the two best cars on the track. At that time, the 18 wasn't any good. The 42, always good, always great along the wall. But in the end, it was the 18 who outduked the 42 to get the win here at Chicago. This is not the first time that Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch have traded paint in a race for the race lead and eventually the race win at Bristol. The 18 comes up, bumps the 42 out of the way. And right on by, the 18 goes. Kyle Busch taking advantage of that bump and run. Kyle Larson not as happy that time. This time he wasn't as mad about it because he had done well, almost the same thing just a lap earlier. Got into the back of that 18, it got into the wall. The 18 gets into the back of the 42. Kyle Larson slides sideways, and Kyle Busch goes on to change the checkered flag. There's no crying in racing, and you know that Kyle Busch isn't crying right now because take a look at the playoff standings. Kyle Busch to the top of the list. 30 playoff points. Kevin Harvick still holding on to second. Two drivers with five wins already this season. Martin Shrex Jr., three wins. Clint Boyer, two. Logano and Austin Dillon rounding out the drivers that have locked in to the playoffs. Dave Burns caught up with Kevin Harvick. Third for Kevin this afternoon on what may be one of the hottest days in NASCAR. Is it the hottest you've ever experienced? No. <laughs> St. Louis 2010, that was that was by far the hottest. But uh, just got to thank all my guys. We just got way too tight the last run. We were always one side or the other of it. It was a, it was a tough weekend for us because we never really found the, uh, the handling on our, our Jimmy John's Ford. But the guys kept fighting, and we had, a, we had a decent day. You had speed at different times, including the end of stage one. Your teammate, Kurt, is going to have a little conversation, I'm sure, with you. Tell us about those final laps racing him for the stage win and why it meant as much to you as it would have meant to him. Hey, I don't know why he would have a conversation. Maybe you can tell me that. But, you know, I thought it was a um, good race there and, and just, um, you know, got a stage point. So just got to thank everybody from Jimmy John's and Bush and Ford, Mobile One, Outback, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Morton Buildings, Textron, and LiftMaster, and everybody at Stuart Haas Racing. Kevin, 700 miles in two days in this heat. Uh, imagine it'll take some good cool-down time to, to get over this one. It's my job. 
The job, he did it well today. Kevin Harvick, third. Well, somehow, it's a top five for Clint Boyer today. And, boy, I don't know where to start with your afternoon. What were the issues on pit road to start off with, and how did you not have any problems the rest of the race with that? Well, he's too fast. <laughs> you know, the guys work very hard on, on making sure that they're pushing the envelope, which you have to do in this in this world and, and you know, against this competition, you have to push everything. And certainly pit road is a big thing of that. Uh, you know, you're splitting hairs out there on a racetrack to down to the thousands of, an, of a second, uh, you know, tenths of a second. You can gain seconds on pit road. So obviously our pit road speed was just a little too fast. Um, practice it yesterday and you know, the guys even made some adjustments, but, um, you know, that tight section down there is just obviously too fast. Uh, you know, the first time, you, you second guess yourself, you come down the second time and you're you're obviously cautious, then you know we got a problem. And, and then it was just confusion on, on my part. I wasn't listening, made a mistake, and then <laughs> cost us the third time down. So we got good at pitting today, unfortunately, but, you know, it's, it's just the capabilities there to run with these three guys and, and uh, our race team, we're still young, we're making some mistakes, but we have time to, to you know, gain on those and, and uh, build on those. You know, you hate to give away those stage points. I think we could have probably won both of those stages and maybe that clean air would have put us in contention for, uh, you know, for a win there, but uh, coulda, woulda, shoulda, you know, proud of everybody. Wix Filters was on a, on the car this weekend. Um, everybody at Ford and, and uh, you know, IT Savvy folks were here. It's a new sponsor. There's a lot of good mojo going on with this 14 car. We just got to uh, put it all together and get another a win. What does it say about the strength of the team, though, Clint, to be able to come back and finish top five after all those issues? Well, you add a fast car and a little bit of, uh, you know, pissed off attitude. It's amazing what you can do. Clint Boyer obviously finishing top five, but still not very happy about it. Well, Martin endured for fourth place today. How did you do it, and where were you lacking to go for the win, Martin? Uh, you know, we uh, early on, we were really strong and drove up to the front really quick and thought, man, we're going to really have something for these guys. And I don't know, we, we lost it that second or third run. We lost front turn, and um, we just got tighter consistently throughout the day. We just could never get a turn again. So we we're fought track position really bad, and, uh, you know, pit stops, our pit stall was absolutely horrendous, you know, with the 42 behind us. And it sucked for him as bad as it sucked for us. And... We kind of got that spot by default, so um, that was a shame for both of us. But you know, ultimately, uh, we got back to fourth, which we were a fourth place car with uh, our five hour energy best pro auto owners Toyota. And uh, it's about all we had today. So it was a battle to get what we, what we should have got, but we ended up getting it. So proud of everybody. To race so hard all day, Martin, how much were you conscious of your own health and how you were feeling in this heat? <sighs> well, it was hot as hell, no matter what you did. I tried ice bags for the first time in my whole career, and uh, I'd never done it before. I've seen other guys do it, so I just gave it a shot. And I did better with just a bottle of water dumping, dumping it down my front, and uh, drinking a little bit of it. And I did that probably after this, you know after the first stage was over. And I feel, you know, crappy hot, but uh, I got all I could out of the car, and that's all you could ask for. Okay, go get a seat there. Rolling away his car, which he was leaning on, obviously very thankful for a place to put himself after this day. One of the big three, and take a look at the numbers. Again, as you combine them this season, 13 wins. The rest of the field, only four wins. Stage win, 17, playoff points, 75. Laps led almost as much as the entire field combined. So they continue to amaze this season, and I'm, I'm very impressed. I, I continue to say, we need to applaud excellence, and that's what we're seeing right now out of Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, and Martin Shrex Jr. Again, toward the end of that race, we saw the three of them running one, two, three, until the 42 decided to come up and <laughs> mix it up as well. And that was excellent. That was amazing racing. Uh, you know, as a race fan, that's what I love to see. I like to see two guys going at it that care, that want it really bad. And, man, that's what we got today. And these, both of these guys, they understood what happened. And look, they're talking. I mean, we as fans, we might want to be mad at Kyle Busch because we don't like him or mad at Kyle Larson because we don't like him. And that's what being a fan's all about. But taking the time to really appreciate what we just saw. Kyle Larson drove that thing in the corner way deeper than he should oh, have yeah. trying to get that win. He got in the side of Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch said, you know what? You did it to me, so I'm going to do it to you. And that's what he should have done. That's the way it works. So I, I just thought it was unbelievable. I thought that drive by Kyle, Kyle Larson to just keep digging and digging and he got there. Like, it didn't look like he was going to get there, but with that lap traffic, he did get there. And just a great race. Yes. We're going to focus on this end. 
But from the time the green flag dropped to the time the checkered flag fell, this was an unbelievable race. I agree. And the only variable I can say that's different, we added Dell Jr. <laughs> so maybe it's Dell Jr., the go. factor that gave us this incredible racing. Well, if that's the Dale Jr. effect, then I'm excited because that was 400 miles of grueling racing with a, a finish that, I mean, it has to be one of the most exciting we've seen in memorial history. Absolutely. It was a pretty exciting finish. But like Jess said, this was a great race from start to finish. I got to applaud the drivers. You know, this was really hot, really miserable conditions, and we had a battle for the lead pretty much all day long. We had a lot of storylines and, and an awesome finish. Also, we talk about the big three. We've been wondering who was going to get up there and challenge those big three. Kyle Larson. He showed, his, he showed himself today another second-place finish, unfortunately, at a mile and a half, which makes it seven for him. I know he's trying to break that streak, but – He's showing a little speed. Maybe he could be one of those guys to challenge the big three down in the playoffs. Well, listen, I want to thank – I know it's been anticipated for you coming in the booth, but, man, we had a blast. I think we high five. <laughs> Look, we had as much excitement at the finish that I think the fans did and the, and the competitors did. Tell us about it. The view, you thought about it, the decision to come to the booth. How do you like calling races from up above? Today, man, it was, <laughs> I don't know if it's like this every day, but um, this, this has been a lot of fun. I mean, I knew it would be when I had the chance to do it over the last couple of years. It checks all the boxes for me, man. I get to stay at the track. I love racing. I love being around it. It felt so good just to be here and uh, to have a purpose while I'm here, to be able to be an asset to the sport in any way, shape, or form makes me happy. Well, it was a blast. Next week at Daytona will also be a blast. An exciting race here in Chicago. For a little bit more about this race, we're going to throw you down to the pit box. Krista, Kyle, and DJ. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.